Hey Kimberbell friends, it is just about time to start Candy Corn Quilt Shop. I hope you're all joining us. So we haven't set a date yet, but as we start seeing the orders trickle in from our sponsor, Oma Darlings, then we will go ahead and start on our next project where most of us are finishing up with Vintage Boardwalk now, and we're very excited about the new project coming. So for those of you that are ordering from Oma Darlings, make sure and look in the video description of this video or in the intro that we did a, a couple weeks ago. Um, there is a discount code for those that are purchasing from Oma Darlings and there's a link to their website and all the information on the discount. The code is Kristen Creates and like I said, it's in the video description underneath this video. So you'll want to order from our sponsor and get your products in and like I said, as we start seeing more orders coming in, then we'll know that it's time to start. So as I said before, what you're going to need to get is the booklet that has the CD in it for um, all of the embroidery files for the candy corn quilt shop. And then you're going to want either the fabric kit or the um, like half yard bundle. It depends on what you want to do. There's more than just the one quilt in the booklet. And so you can order the half yard bundle or, or larger um, quantity of fabric that will make it so that you can do all of the projects or you can order just the fabric kit, which is specific to the quilt. So either one works and Oma Darlings has all of them ready to go. And then you'll also need the embellishment kit for your project. There, it has all of the leather and um, mylar and buttons and everything that we're gonna need for this quilt. And there's also a thread kit. I haven't received mine yet, but there's a thread kit. That's optional, but it's pretty cool because it has all the colors that you need to match the fabrics. And um, that's and that kit is from Glide, so it's really good thread. I like those. And then you'll also need the fabric backing. It does not come in your fabric kit, so make sure to get the the backing for your fabric. And while you're waiting for us to finish up Vintage Boardwalk, we only have like another day or so. Um, and like I said, we're just waiting for everyone to get their orders in so that we can start this as a group project. But if you've already received your product, um, you can start cutting your fabric. So I've only done one day so far. Um, I'm still finishing up Vintage Boardwalk. But um, so uh, Chantel added uh, information on these um, little dry erase packets that you can use. It comes to get like 30 or something of these little packets and you can put your fabrics. And what I'm doing is by day, you can do each individual project, but like the very first uh, project that we're going to do has three um, blocks in it. So I've put all three in here. And like I said, I've only done one day so far. I've never, um, cut before I've quilted before. Um, I've never prepared in that way because I find it boring to sit there and cut and cut and cut all day long. But the tutorials take so much time. Anything that will help, um, shorten the process is a good idea. So I am going to do it. I'm going to try and do it um, for this quilt. And I know a lot of people were interested in these packets. So actually I'll add a link in the video description as well if you want to buy these um, dry erase marker packet things, whatever you call them. There's several different options, but I'm going to add a link to the ones that I bought. So anyway, what you're going to want to do though is start prepping your fabric. So you would cut each of the fabrics for the project and I'm going ahead and backing each of them with fusible stabilizer. And so you would cut, like I said, there's three for this first project. So you would go ahead and cut each of those according to the directions in the booklet. Um, but I'm also going to give that information on each tutorial. So you don't have to do it ahead. You could do it right before you're going to start the project, whatever works for you. And then I'm also including my batting. So the batting, you always cut a half, I always cut a half inch larger than the final cut size. So if you look in your booklet, like it'll tell us to have our, our background fabrics, these, the, the main fabric, main fabric. Um, those would be, I think it was six and a half by eight for the first one. Let me look real quick here. Um, six and a half by eight and a half for the, the main fabric that's our cut size. 
And then you look further in the description at the end and it tells you the final cut size. So like on these, the final cut size of this is four and a half by six and a half. And that's how we determine our quilting design that I will share with each um, block that we're going to work on and it also helps determine the batting size so if our final cut size of this project is four and a half by six and a half that means that we want our batting a half inch larger which would be five by seven so I went ahead and I cut all three to five by seven so do what works for you if you have time to pre-cut great I don't know that I will for this project but I went ahead and I looked through the booklet I just received my order from Oma Darlings and so I, I did a little prep while I'm still working on Vintage Boardwalk and it looks like there are 28 blocks so this one is actually more doable or more manageable than Vintage Boardwalk which was a much larger quilt um, so 28 blocks hopefully you can cut them ahead of time if it works for you and again if not that's totally fine do what works for you um, I am going to try and and get this done ahead of time so we don't have a, a start date yet I'm hoping for next week I, I am assuming that a lot of the orders are going to come in this week and we'll go ahead and set a start date as soon as I see those start coming in so get your orders into Oma Darlings if you haven't already. They are sponsoring this project for us. So they have given our entire group, Kristen Creates, that group, are all getting a 10% off discount with the code Kristen Creates. So make sure to sponsor them. That's what helps keep our tutorials free and, and we appreciate their support so much. So Candy Corn Quilt Shop, get started. Do you like candy corn? Well, how about a candy corn quilt? <laughs> Let's do it. Hey everyone, my name is Kristen Som and I have a group on Facebook called Kristen Creates. There is a link in the video description and make sure to subscribe to the Kristen Creates YouTube channel so that you get notifications whenever we have the next challenge ready for you to participate in. We are going to do the candy corn quilt shop together. I'm looking forward to all of us having more fun together. Hey Kimberbell friends, it's time to start on candy corn quilt shop. I know we've waited for this one and we're very excited to get started. This project is sponsored by Oma Darlings. And if you look in the description of this video, which is under at the bottom of this video, there are links to Oma Darlings and information on the coupon code. Since they are sponsoring this project for us, they have offered a 10% discount on all of your candy corn quilt shop supplies. So make sure to um, support them in sponsoring our project. So a quick reminder of the things that we need for this project. So you need the Candy Corn Quilt Shop booklet. It has the CD inside of the booklet with all of the embroidery designs. And then we also need the embellishment kit. I have mine in a Ziploc bag because I've already gotten into it. So um, the Candy Corn Quilt Shop embellishment kit. And again, all of these items are available on Oma Darlings on their website. And there's a link in this video description. Another thing that you need is the fabric kit. You can get the, the boxed kit. Some shops aren't selling the boxes because it's harder to ship. So either way, you can get like a half yard bundle or just the regular um, fabric kit and um, all the supplies are in there but the backing is not in the fabric kit so make sure to get a backing i don't have mine yet to show you but um you'll need backing for your for the quilt and then the, an optional item that you can get i don't have mine yet but just an example is a thread kit so the thread kit will have all the colors that you need specifically for this quilt and um, then you don't have to worry about trying to match up the colors and does this color go well with this quilt and you don't have to deal with any of that. So again, I don't have mine yet, but Oma Darlings is selling them. So check out their website for that. And it's a kit. I think that there's 10 um, thread colors in it. And until I get mine, I've, I've picked out some um, 
backup threads. There, there's a few conversion charts and um, you can just try it. That's why I was saying it, the, the thread kit's easier. So if you hold up your fabrics that you're gonna use against your um, thread supplies that you already have, like your thread stash, then you can try and match them up and get something close, but it's easier to get the kit. So I would go for that if you can. All right, so those are the, the supplies that you need to be able to get started with this uh, quilt, the Candy Corn Quilt Shop Quilt, and it's sponsored by Oma Darling, so make sure to check them out. All right, so for today, so a couple things. We have several newbies that are doing their first quilt, very exciting. We will go over the whole process. So how to do the quilting in the hoop and um, what size of fabrics and battings and everything that you're gonna need. So don't worry, we're gonna have everything taken care of for you. It'll, it'll be easy. I promise you're gonna really enjoy this one. I've been looking through the guide and it looks really fun. So on that, there are 29 blocks that are um, to be quilted regular blocks the first 29 and there are no chenille ones so i wanted to point that out because um for those of you that are using the the fabric like you're you're putting your fabrics into these um packets they're called dry dry erase packets i think and um if you're pre-cutting totally optional up to you but if you're pre-cutting you don't have to worry about chenille on this one so on the chenille blocks like for boardwalk we just finished and you don't want to back those fabrics with fusible stabilizer so that's why i'm pointing out that those of you that are pre-cutting um don't worry about chenille and we'll talk about each block as we work on it but if you're pre-cutting that's fine so i'll also add a link to these packets these are optional um it's just to be able to organize your fabrics and some people are doing them by section um i'm, I'm not sure the other options but i'm doing them by day so um you can see i've got number four and five and six and so on i'm doing them by day and i'm just putting all of the fabrics that are pre-cut and i also have fusible stabilizer on the back and i'm including the batting and any embellishments that are um not for later because so, most of the embellish embellishments will do after the quilt is done but like some of them have applique glitter and um, mylar and whatever so whatever I need for that block I'm adding into that day's packet so all right let's see what else we need to talk about oh there's also 20 border blocks by the way and I'm gonna quilt those two and I'll show you how if you're pre-cutting you could make those a little bit larger I think I'll probably do mine about a half inch larger than what is in the directions for those when I'm pre-cutting, I only have about 13 days pre-cut so far, but I'm hoping to make time to pre-cut all of my fabrics, including the border blocks. So that's optional. And if you've already pre-cut, don't worry. Um, think about like when we do the inner borders and outer borders, if you've done any of these tutorials with me before as a group project, um, those you, you cut to the size that you need, and it always works out just fine. So the reason for cutting them a little bit larger if you choose is so that if the quilting design, the embroidery pulls at the fabric, then you won't have trouble piecing it all together. So on boardwalk that we just finished, I pre-cut mine a little bit larger and um, by the end I was just doing them the regular size and I did totally fine. Mine, mine came together perfectly so I didn't have any issues. And I think the reason is because on the quilting or on the embroidery blocks, embroidery and applique, those have so much higher stitch count that you can see that it's going to pull, at, the stitches will pull at the fabric. and. The quilting is very minor, you know, it's just a little bit of background quilting and I didn't find that those pulled at all. So it's up to you. If you want to do your border blocks a little, if you want to cut them a little bit larger, go for it. If you don't want to, that's fine. Or if you've already pre-cut and you don't have any extra size in there, that's fine. You'll be fine. I promise. Okay. Um, so embellishments, thread, fabrics, everything that you're going to need um we will go through the whole process so a lot of people like to ask well how are we going to put the backing on we're not there yet <laughs> but here's the process we will go through all of the blocks do the border blocks put all the sections together 
And then we will, after that, we will do the inner borders and the outer borders. And once we've got the whole quilt top done, then we're gonna stitch in the ditch. And the stitch in the ditch is adding the back fabric. And I'll go over the whole process, don't worry. Stitch in the ditch and then the binding, and then we'll do the embellishments and then it's done. My goal is to get this done before Halloween, but we're starting late. Um, so we'll see, you know, if it works out great, if it doesn't, we're not going to kill ourselves making it happen. So, all right. Um, and if you're using a five by seven hoop, I'm going to have a separate tutorial on that. And I'll try to give information on each block too, as far as quilting. So just a quick heads up, you can do this whole quilt using a five by seven hoop, but, um, imagine like, so you're, here's your first or one of the first blocks. So instead of having um, the quilting be just in this little bit that we're gonna embroider, you want it on the whole block. So the way that, I'll go over all of this on each block, but so for instance, say that we have, I don't remember what this is, six and a half by eight and a half or something like that. We're gonna use our cut size to determine the quilting designs. And of that, that's the size that we want our quilting to be. So we don't want the overall, like the, the original, this is the first step of this is our whole um, background fabric. We don't want that because we're gonna cut part of it away anyway, but we do want it as our final cut size. So if our final cut size is like four and a half by six and a half, then you want a quilting design that is four by six. And so if you have, a, if you have, um, say that the quilt design, it, the final cut size is six by eight or six and a half by eight and a half. If you have a five by seven hoop, then you can't do a six by eight quilting design, but that's okay. So what you would do, it, and I'll show you in a whole separate video that's just for the five by seven people, you would easily double hoop. And the Kimberbell quilting designs are set up in a way that everything just works together perfectly. So you won't have any trouble. You would do, so say you wanted a six by eight quilt um, block, you would do your quilting designs in what? So it'll work and we'll go over on that on each one, don't worry. All right, so for today's block, let's talk about today's block specifically. We are gonna do, the first three blocks. Normally we would only do one in a day, but this one they're grouped together. If you see empty bobbins, Alma scraps, and rest in piece, pieces, they're all together. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that as our first challenge. So all three of these blocks, and don't worry, you can take your time on it. We'll try and book like every other day as a day, as a working day. And um, the other day will give me time to do the video editing. So. It won't be too stressful, don't worry. And all I ask you to do is do your challenge and then make sure to add a photo in the comments. That way I know when people are ready to move on. And it's fun, that's what makes it a group project is I'm seeing your work, you're seeing my work, and we're all seeing how the whole group project is coming together and it just makes it really fun, more fun together, right? All right, so for today, we are gonna want these three main fabrics. So the purple one and the green one and the black with spider webs on it. And all of these, I always back them on my main fabric. I back them with fusible stabilizer. I'm currently using SF 101 by Pelham. Um, I've also used World Wiener um, fusible stabilizer. Kimberbell has, uh, has new stabilizers out. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm sure they're fantastic. So use what works for you, and but either way, just back it with fusible stabilizer, each of these main fabrics. So on these, the main fabrics, we're going to cut them to six and a half by eight and a half, each of these, purple, green, and black spider webs, and six and a half by eight and a half, all right? Six and a half by eight and a half, and again, fused, backed with fusible stabilizer. And then for the headstone, I think it's called, we're going to use, it's a plain gray, plain gray fabric. And um, all of these are in your booklet and in your fabric kit. So one thing I'm noticing, so uh, these are applique pieces. And as always, I back these with fusible stabilizer. Some don't, and, and that's totally up to you. But I, I almost never get puckering. I never have problems. And 
it makes them really crisp. You can see my blocks are very crisp when they've got the fusible stabilizer on it. And it makes it easier for cutting those applique pieces. And if it didn't have that fusible stabilizer on it, when you're cutting, all of your fabric starts fraying and it's not going to do that as much with the fusible stabilizer on the back. So one thing I noticed as I'm looking at the back of these is one of them, I don't know if you can see that, but there's little strings and I didn't clear them off before putting my fusible stabilizer on. And so you can kind of see them if they're squiggler. So try to make sure that the, that the back of your fabrics are clear of any threads before you adhere your fusible stabilizer. So three of these and this size for the applique piece, the headstone, we're going to want these to be four and a half by six and a half. Cut these to four and a half by six and a half. And again, I do put fusible stabilizer on the back of my applique pieces. So those are the only fabrics that we need for, for today's challenge. And this is with three blocks. So three main fabrics and three of the gray headstones. And then batting. You always need batting. Anytime you're quilting, you're going to add batting. So on this, what I do is I always look at the final cut size and then I add a half an inch. So the final cut size on this is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want our batting to be five by seven. So easy, three pieces, five by seven of the batting. And um, you're going to cut this down. We'll go over all of that part in photos. But the first, for the Kimberbell Designs quilting, the first step is a placement stitch that you do right on your stabilizer, and that is the placement stitch for the batting. Then you lay down your batting, and then it will do, the number two is the tack down of the batting, and then we're gonna trim. So it's all gonna be exactly the right size. You don't have to worry about anything. And what that does is it takes away, you don't have batting in your seams. So that's why we love the Kimberbell quilting designs. They have it all incorporated into it so that we can just dummy proof, it's super easy, just, oh yeah, I'm gonna trim around this and then I have no batting in my seams. Easy to do. So that's one and two. Number three is placement stitch for the main fabric. And number four is the basting stitch of the main fabric. So those are already incorporated into the quilting designs. So we'll also talk about, especially when we get to the larger blocks, sometimes they won't fit in your hoop. So even if you have, say you have an eight by 12 hoop and the quilting design is eight by 12, well, it's not gonna fit. And the reason for that is because the placement stitch and the basting stitch of the main fabric are larger. So that one is a half inch larger and then it doesn't fit in your eight by 12 hoop. So we'll go over that and how to do that. But the easy solution is take out steps three and four. You would just lay down your, your, your main fabric on top of your batting and tape it in place easy to do. Um, but that those are the two steps that make it a little bit larger of a quilting design. And they're a nice to have, but it's not necessary. So feel free to take those out if you need to. Um, personally, I wouldn't recommend um, making the quilting design smaller because you do want it to fill your your main fabric, but that is an option as well. Some um, sometimes you'll need that. So there are some machine that has the rounded hoops and that makes it so that it cuts off the edges so that you actually have to make it a little bit smaller. I don't remember if that's Bernina or Janome, but I heard that um, some people had an issue with that. And so there's workarounds, don't worry, we'll figure it all out together. And let's see, we went over the fabrics and the thread or I'm sorry not the thread the batting so um one thing that the most important part of this is the quilting so we're going to do the quilting in the hoop and on this project uh they have a guide they Kimberbell created a guide of this is their what they used for their blocks so for each block they, they used this specific quilting design they used this specific quilting color thread color um, so I'm going to try and follow it on this one. I've never done that before. I've always chosen my own quilting designs and my own quilting thread colors, but I'm going to let them do the work <laughs> and make it easy. And I'm just going to follow along. I personally like to have the, the quilting uh, stand out a little bit more. 
and they have it where like you're doing uh, green thread on a green fabric and so you don't see it as much but it's a busy enough quilt that you know you don't have to have every little bit show so I'm gonna try it for this one so it'll be a little harder on the tutorials for you to see but I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a try I will still give all the information as far as what quilting design I'm using so you don't have to look it up on the Kimberbell site but I am following the Kimberbell guide and I'm also following the Kimberbell book so let's talk about these what these specific blocks for today so like I said we're doing um, the first one they're on page where are we page 12 of the booklet and it's the empty bobbins alma scraps and rest in pieces and for those since our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half that means that we want a quilting design that is four by six so they've chosen a different one for each of these blocks they're located in different places in the quilt you can always see on the back cover actually on this one it's bigger on the front cover so on the front cover you can see where all the blocks are and that will help you to know um, what quilting design but like i said i'm going to just go ahead and go with the kimberbell ones for this so let's talk about that so number one the first one is the black with spider webs and they are using a chevron chevron one in horizontal and again all of these are going to be in four by six quilting because our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half so chevron one in a horizontal and they're using black thread for, for this all right and number two is this green fabric and they are using celebration two it's that banner the cute one of the cute banners celebration two in hor in, i'm sorry in vertical celebration two in vertical in size four by six all right and then number three is the purple fabric and they are using Halloween one. I, I think that's the spider webs actually. I'm not sure. I don't remember off the top of my head. Spy, uh, anyway, Halloween one and again in four by six. So that's what we need for today. They're using purple thread for their quilting. I don't have my thread kit yet. So I've chosen one that's somewhat similar. Or it'll get by until my thread kit arrives. And then green thread for the green fabrics. And the rest of this video we will do in um, photos. I, I always just take a whole ton of photos, load them up on the video, add a bunch of um, wording so that you know what you're looking at. And um, so one other thing is on the stabilizer, if you look through your booklet, they give you great recommendations on everything. And what they're recommending, recommending is hooping light mesh cutaway stabilizer and that's nice because it's softer and if you're going to actually use your quilt i don't use my quilts not not these kimberbell quilts in any way they're too decorative so i use them as a decorative purpose and mine hang on the wall so for me um i don't need something super soft i'm going to use tearaway and the reason there's a few reasons one is it's it's quite a bit less expensive than the um, mesh cutaway, but I also have had such good luck. So, you know, you just don't change things that are working well. And um, I've had really good luck and I've seen some, some pictures um, of people working on this quilt and they're having a lot of puckering. And so, and I just never have puckering as an issue. So I am going to keep with what's working for me. You do what works for you. Um, so I am going to hoop tearaway stabilizer and use my batting and always back every fabric with fusible stabilizer. So that works really well for me. That's what I'm gonna do. So that's one thing I wanted to point out to you. Um, quilting designs we talked about, thread colors we talked about, um, and all the different sizes. So I think we're <laughs> are you excited this is going to be a really fun one so hopefully we can get it done in time for halloween and we've already got uh candy cane lane on our heels excited to get that one started too that one will be out soon and we have a different sponsor for that one so we'll talk about that after this um project so 
uh, Oma Darlings. Make sure and check out Oma Darlings if you realize that you don't have your backing kit or whatever you need for this quilt. They've got all the supplies ready for you and they're, they've done such a great job in jumping through all the hoops to make this happen quickly for us. So it was very last minute and, and they had to order all their supplies and then reorder because they had so many of us going, hey, we want this and we want that. And so they've done a fantastic job and I'm so thankful for Oma and, and all the team at Oma Darling. So, all right, let's get started. Hey everyone, just a real quick tip. So on this gray fabric that we're using for the headstones, the back side with the fusible stabilizer looks very much like light gray. So be really careful when you put down your fabric face up that it is actually the gray, light gray, and not the light gray from the um, stabilizer. So ask me how I know. <laughs> Get the right one.
you afraid of ghosts? Don't worry, this one won't be that scary. <laughs> Let's do it. Hi everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing our work on the Candy Corn Quilt Shop Quilt. So today we are going to do Boo ha Hoop. Boo Hoop. It is on page 14 of our booklet. And uh, the products that we're going to need for today are only a very simple block, by the way. It'll be a nice, easy one. So today what we need is the green with black bats on it. And that is going to be cut to six and a half by six and a half. And make sure and back that with fusible stabilizer of some sort to ward off puckers. And then for our applique piece, one simple applique piece, it is the light gray with lines on it. And that is gonna be cut to four by four. And I back the, my applique pieces with fusible stabilizer as well. So you're also gonna need some batting. Don't forget your batting. So since our final cut size on this is four and a half by four and a half, that means that we want our batting to be at least five by five. It really can be any size as long as it's at least five by five. And the reason is because we're gonna trim it in, in that uh, quilting design. The number two is the tack down of the quilting design and then we trim it right after that. So it doesn't ma really matter what size it is, but you want it to make sure to be able to tack down. And so five by five is a really good size for this one. So those are the only three products that we need for this um, challenge today. You're gonna want some thread. I am going to use the green that will be in our thread kit. And for our quilting design today, like I mentioned yesterday, I'm using the quilting designs that Kimberbell used on their quilt and they created a whole guide of each block. This is the quilting design that they chose. So I'm going to use Halloween 4 and it's going to be in size 4x4. Four four. Since our final cut size is 45 by 45 that means that we want a quilting design that's 4x4. Four four. So far, all of you folks that are using the 5x7 hoop, everything's working fine so far. So I haven't needed to make another uh, tutorial specific to that, but it's coming up soon. So um, for now, everyone in every hoop size, we got it covered. <laughs> so 4x4 four four today today boo hoop and let's get started in the comments of this video is a link to the Kristen creates Facebook group and to the Oma darlings uh, website if you have more items that you need to order for the candy corn quilt shop so always check the video description make sure to subscribe and we're, we've got it all going on <laughs>
And just a side note, congrats to everyone that completed the first challenge and shared a photo. Make sure to always share your photo. That's what makes it fun as a group project. My home is not haunted, is yours? Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and today we are going to work on block number five. It's called Home Hoop and the products that we're gonna need to do this block today, very simple block. So we are going to need this black. It's got little witches. Oh my gosh, it matches the quilting design. Did you see that? Oh, I just realized that. How cute. So um, it's black fabric with black um, witch and swirly on it. And that's the fabric that we need today. And the cut size for this one is six and a half by six and a half. As always, back it with feasible stabilizer to ward off puckers and keep it nice and crisp and easy for cutting and then we are also going to need the light gray it's got lines on it back that with feasible stabilizer also for your applique piece and this one is going to be four by four this is the one that's going to look like it's in a hoop and um, then we need our batting and for our batting we always cut it a half inch larger than our final cut size and the final cut size on this project is four and a half by four and a half so that means that we want to batting a piece of batting that is at least five by five it can really be any size like i mentioned yesterday as long as it's at least five by five so for your batting and then um, for this block we're going to use some quilting we're going to quilt each of these blocks as we go so for this one we're going to use chevron one in size four by four and we want to use the horizontal way since it's going to so by the way make sure that you realize that this is directional fabric because of that cute little witch you don't want your witch upside down or sideways so cut your fabric for this one. Um, make sure it's directional when you're cutting it. It's six and a half by six and a half, so you can't go wrong. But when you place it in your hoop, you wanna make sure that it's going the right way. So on that, we're gonna use the quilting design, like I said, in chevron one in horizontal four by four. And then I'm using black. Unfortunately, that won't show very well, but that's what we're doing um, if we're copying the Kimberbell guide on this. So. I'm using black thread on this black fabric and um, using chevron one and it's gonna be so cute it looks like did you did any of you guys you do cross stitch you did you used to do cross stitch I loved cross stitch I have several things in my house that are cross stitch and and the this design and that boo ghost one from yesterday both look like cross stitch design so how cute is that all right so let's get started
afraid of spiders? Oh my gosh, I am. <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are starting on block number six today. It's called Eek Hoop. <laughs> so are you afraid of spiders? I'm really curious. I am. And if you didn't know, I'm actually a black belt and I'm afraid of spiders. I might not be actually afraid of them, but they really gross me out and I don't like them at all. So curious if you are too. All right, so for today, for this Eek Hoop number six block, we are going to use this really cool orange, crazy, lots of oranges, um, spider web fabric. And we're gonna cut that to six and a half by six and a half. And as always, back it with fusible stabilizer, six and a half by six and a half. That is such a fun fabric. And then for our um, little, in the hoop part, the part that looks like it's in the hoop. Uh, that one, we are, the hooped fabric it's called. We're gonna use the light gray with lines on it and I always back my applique pieces with fusible stabilizer as well. It helps ward off the puckers, makes it easier to cut, looks really nice and crisp. So I do uh, use fusible stabilizer on that. So four by four for this applique piece, one simple applique, very easy to do. Um, and as always, you want your batting whenever you're quilting. So for this one, our final cut size of this block is four and a half by four and a half. So that means that we want our batting to be at least five by five. All right, and then for your thread, I don't have my thread kit yet, but um, an orange. I think that there's two oranges in the thread kit and I'm probably gonna use the darker of the two. So for the quilting. So on the quilting, we are going to use wavy three in a horizontal. And like I said, because it's four and a half by four and a half cut size, we want our quilting design to be a half inch smaller. Do you know why? Do you get that? That means that there's a quarter inch all the way around for our seam allowance. All right, and since we're cutting our, our batting inside, we don't have to worry about um, that being in our, our seam. Sorry, my dog is licking next to me. <laughs> Anyway, wavy three in horizontal and then use the quilting design that is size four by four. And that's it. We're going to make a spider. <laughs>
It's time to make a witch's broom. Are you ready? Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Song here and we are continuing our work on Candy Corn Quilt Shop. It is a quilt by Kimberbell and we're having so much fun already. If you haven't already joined the Kristen Creates Facebook group, that's where we are sharing pictures and the different challenges for each day. So today we are on page 17 and we are doing broom parking. So this one is cute. It's normally, from what I've seen in the past, normally the, um, the saying is broom parking only, all others will be towed, like T-O-A-D. And this one is broom parking only, all others will be stitched in the ditch. I thought that was pretty cute. So those of us that just completed Vintage Boardwalk a week ago or so, we just did our stitch in the ditch, so I thought that this was pretty cute. So a couple of things on this one. If you look at the photo in the booklet, it shows Wavy 3 quilting and it shows it sideways, like vertical, and yet the directions say to do it in um, Wavy 3 horizontal. So do what works for you. As I mentioned previously, I am doing the same quilting designs that Kimberbell recommended for this quilt. They did it for their quilt and they, they are sharing the information for those that just want to make it easy and follow along. So I printed out the guide. If you look on the Kimberbell website under quilting, they have a candy corn bundle that you can purchase. And in that bundle, there's various photos. So one of them is this guide that shows you what quilting design they use for every single block. And that's what I'm doing. I printed it out. And so I'm just following along with the Kimberbell guide and sharing that information for you guys. So for broom parking, what we're going to need today is, it's a very simple block today with just uh, one applique piece. So we're going to start with this black and white striped fabric and as always back it with fusible stabilizer. So our group is doing great I have to say. I saw in in the other group in the larger Kimberbell group that um, there are some people with puckering and, and asking questions and all that and you guys are all doing great. All of the blocks look so perfect. I'm, I'm quite impressed. So if you're not using fus fusible stabilizer on the back, do it. It really, really helps. And we also have our batting. And then like I mentioned before, I am backing my applique pieces with fusible stabilizer as well. It really helps uh, ward off the puckers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for our main fabric, like I said, the black and white striped, we're going to start with this at six and a half by eight and a half. And backed with fusible stabilizer, six and a half by eight and a half. And then we have one applique piece and it is that really cute purple cauldron wording um, in four by six. And again, backed with fusible stabilizer, four by six for the sign. And then for our batting, so what we always do at half inch larger than our final cut size. And our final cut size of this block is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want our batting to be five by seven, five by seven batting. All right, and then we are going to quilt. And like I mentioned, Kimberbell is doing wavy three horizontal. We just used that for our spider, our last block, but um, they're in different locations on the quilt, so it doesn't matter. So wavy three, they're saying to do it in horizontal, but the photo is vertical. So it's totally up to you on how you want to do it. It's your quilt, do it your way. I don't know if you can see that, but um, they've got the background quilting in black and they have it vertical, but it does say in the guide to do horizontal. So whatever works for you. Um, it also could be depending on what hoop size you use because some of them automatically turn sideways. So if that's the case, then I'll give you information when we get to um, that part. I always do that part in pictures. So on a side note, yesterday I told you I wasn't afraid of spiders when I'm, I don't like them, but I'm not really afraid of them. And that's when we were working on the eek spider block. And yesterday... <laughs> <laughs> a little fella came to join me in my craft room. So you can see him here. 
This guy scared me so much. He was huge. And the biggest problem is, do you see where he is? He was right next to my Kimberbell mug, that ceramic or glass mug that we got in the very first Bella box. So I didn't know what to do. He's right next to it. I'm not going to smash him with my mug right there. Very breakable mug. So I didn't know what to do. So I ended up not being able to get the guy. So he's somewhere in my craft room. So you know what that means. We have to blow up the craft room. We have to burn it down. <laughs> There's a big spider somewhere in here and I haven't found him. <laughs> I even sent a message to my daughter with a picture of him and I said, help. <laughs> she lives about nine hours away. I don't think she's going to be able to help. So anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. I big, strong black belt girl, not afraid of spiders. And yeah, I am for sure. Did not like that guy at all. So not fun. So we're going to work on broom parking today. And one other thing, I got some presents today. I'm pretty excited. So, Oma oh Darlings, our wonderful, wonderful sponsor for this quilt project, sent me the thread kit. Yay! I'm so excited. I have to say that since I didn't have the thread kit, I was trying to figure out what from my stash would work, and that's just harder. Let's just make it easy. Get the thread kit. If you haven't already done it, Oma oh Darlings has these in stock, so you definitely want a thread kit if you can do it. Plus, it helps with um, building up your stash, right? So you get all these really fun colors. There are, um, there's two oranges, so a lighter orange and a darker orange. There's this yellow, really bright yellow, super fun color. And then this like sand color, that's, that was good for the hoops, around the hoops that we did yesterday and this really pretty green i think it's called kiwi yeah kiwi what a fun color is that i love that and then there is a lighter gray and a darker gray so this one is great in my opinion this one is great for the um that little screw on the hoops that we did yesterday that one is very helpful i had to try and find something that would work because i didn't have this and Grays are not that easy. They're, they're very, very different. <laughs> so, and then black and it's not regular white. Did you see that? It's like super white. I think it's called super white, something like that. Yep. Super white. So that's pretty fun. And then did I mention the purple? I love purple. I don't have, it's funny. I have lots of pinks, surprise, surprise, but I don't have that many purples. So I could not find a replacement for this, something that worked just right. Um, so I'm really excited to have this thread kit. So if you haven't already, make sure and order your thread kit from Oma Darlings. It's specific to the candy corn quilt chop. So it already has all the colors that you need for doing this thread. And then you know everything goes together. You don't have to worry about, oh, should I bring in this blue or should I bring in whatever? This, all these colors go with the quilt that's already planned. So that's super nice and helpful and also you know what I should mention if you look <clears throat> you know how when we're doing the quilt blocks and you're trying to figure out what color you're supposed to use if you're following the guide and it's got this teeny teeny tiny little box and you're like Kali is that the light gray or the dark gray <laughs> it's hard to tell well if you look on page three it has all of them in a larger box so that you can reference from this to that little box to be able to um, know which color to use. So especially when it's only showing one orange and it's in this teeny tiny little box and you don't know if it's the lighter orange or the darker orange, you can reference it from here and that tells you which one. Super easy guide. So that's very helpful on page three of your booklet. So one other thing that I got from Oma Darlings, <coughs> excuse me, is my backing so um oh how cute and she sent me a little note i didn't even see that yet <laughs> i just got this out of my mailbox today so um one thing i didn't mention or i did mention actually in the very first one is that if you get the fabric kit the backing is not included in that so make sure that you order your backing you're not going to be able to finish your quilt so oma is such a cutie oh my gosh so happy that we're using her as our very first sponsor so get your backing kit. How cute is this? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How cute it matches 
the houses in Boulevard and in Candy Corn Quilt. For those of you that joined me for Boulevard, we did it as a group project in the Kimberbell group last year, and I know a lot of people are doing it right now. And we have our own Katie Mayo doing the Broomhilda quilt in, in, our, in our group as well. We've got a few things going on for those overachievers that want to do more, so that's super awesome. And then one last thing, oh my also sent me a Kimberbell shirt. How cute is that? I love this. This is wonderful. She's such a sweetheart. Thank you, Oma. All right, so we are going to work on broom parking today. Oh, one last thing. Sorry. I wanted to ask you, did you guys finish cutting out your, your quilt? I finished mine yesterday. I'm pretty happy about it. Oops, I'm dropping some. Um, so I put all of my blocks into um, these dry erase bags. They're in the video description underneath this video. There is a link to the bags that I bought <clears throat> and I did them by day. So each day I have one bag that has all of my um, products that I need to be able to complete that challenge. So um, super helpful. And the best part <laughs> for me, the clean freak that I am, my craft room is so organized. So you should have seen it when I was working on a uh, boardwalk with everybody. Oh my gosh, if you saw my craft room, I would have been so embarrassed. There were piles of um, batting and the fabrics and just everything all over. And I'm moving it all aside to try and make room for what I needed to work on. And oh, this is so much easier to have it all done and ready for me. I really like this idea. I thought it would make me insane to spend an entire day cutting. And actually it took me probably three days because I was doing it in between the tutorials. But um, put a movie on, turn on Hallmark Channel, <laughs> sit there and cut your fabrics. And I, I think this is great. I love to be able to have the space available in my room without stuff everywhere. So anyway, do what works for you. It's working well for me and I'm excited to get started on broom parking. Let's do it. One other thing, for those that are pre-cutting, um, I wanted to show you something that I found, a mistake that I made. So, um, I, like I said, I did all of my blocks by day. So block one, two, three were all together and then four and then five and six. And depending on how they were in the book, I just did them that way. And then when I got toward the end, I did section. So section four. And I wanted to show you that on one of my blocks, actually on a couple of them, these black and white. So earlier on, I think I overcut one of them a little bit too large. And so now these, the little ones are a little too small. And so this is what I did in, in case you find that you make that mistake as well. Um, so what I did is I cut the fusible stabilizer to exactly the size that it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be two and a half by two and a half. And so I cut it to that and then I fused it onto the back of the black and white fabric. And if you can see, so I have this little tiny edge that my fabric wasn't quite big enough. Uh, it wasn't quite the right size, a tiny bit small, my own doing. But so what this does is it gives me my, it, it gives me my seam allowance, right? So instead of having to do a quarter inch from the edge that was too small, now I'm doing a quarter inch, or I will be doing a quarter inch from the sides and it, it'll work fine because it'll still pull in from the fabric. It, it won't make it too small and, and where you're trying to piece everything together and going, uh oh, I messed up. So if you cut one a little bit small or on your pinwheel blocks, if those end up a little bit small, whatever the, the case may be, um, use some fusible stabilizer and that gives you your seam allowance and it makes it the right size that it's supposed to be. So that's just my little tip um, since I did mess up on a couple of these. So um, cut really well <laughs> or use this little fix. <laughs> Hey everyone, one quick note. So on the broom parking, we are going to put down our applique piece and we are not going to trim it. And we are going to do all of the wording on, on this block and then we are going to trim it before we do the satin stitch. So we did this also on the um, headstone blocks. 
but a couple of us made mistakes and or made a mistake and um, forgot to trim before adding the satin stitch. We're so programmed to trim after um, we put down the applique, applique piece and then forgot later. So um, make sure it will all be in the in the tutorial, just like the other one, but it we're just programmed to do it um, in a certain way. So just make sure and notice on the tutorial that it's going to have us um, put down this applique piece, then we'll stitch all of our uh, wording before uh, cut before trimming and then after we do that we will trim it right before the satin stitch so um, just keep an eye out that a few did make that mistake and so we want to make sure to be careful about it on this next one so broom parking does that same thing that we did on headstones and like I said we're going to trim right before we do the satin stitch so just keep that in mind that's all
Do you have some shelves of fabric? Me too. But we're going to do a different kind of fabric shelves. <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with Candy Corn Quilt Shop. Today is kind of a big one. So we are going to work on the fabric shelves today. It actually looks like a very easy block, but this one has our first chance for the people that are using a 5x7 hoop. So it's their first chance at doing the double hooping, at, both for the quilting and for the fabric shelves themselves. And it's also our first chance of doing double pop rulers. So we did this a lot with the boardwalk quilt, but this is our first time so far for Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So I will show you how to do this. It's not hard at all. Um, just need a visual on how to do it. Very easy though. All right, so also, if you haven't already ordered your thread kit, Today is, um, we're going to use pretty much every thread, <laughs> I think like every one of them, uh, for this one block. So if you don't already have this, it's a good time to get it and maybe even wait on doing this block until you get your kit. Um, but this is a, a good one for, for this block. We're going to use up all of the colors and it's such a great kit. I got mine from Alma Darlings. You should too because they are sponsoring our project. So get your thread kit and get ready for this block. So fabric shelves. So you've seen my my um, stash of fabric, right? <laughs> I love my fabric. It's, it's pretty exciting. So it's pretty simple. Um, mine are little pieces. This one we're going to actually make a fabric shelf in our uh, quilt block today. So the block itself is not bad as far as um, applique pieces and lots of things. It's really just lots of thread colors. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need for today. So our first thing is the white with orange dots fabric. And as always, back it with fusible stabilizer. And this one, we're going to want this cut to eight and a quarter by 12 and a half eight and a quarter, usually it's half. So make sure and notice that eight and a quarter by 12 and a half. Not that it really matters because we're gonna trim it down afterward, but eight and a quarter by 12 and a half, white with orange dots, backed with fusible stabilizer for our main background, our main fabric. And then um, for the fabric shelves. So I was a little confused on which are which is the fabric shelves and which is the back panel when I was cutting them. But um, I figured it out, and you will too. So this large one, uh, the black, is fabric shelves. So this one we're going to want cut to 5 and a half by 10 and a half. And as always, backed with fusible stabilizer. This is an applique piece. All right, fabric shelves in black. It's the plain black, not the one with the, the witch on it. Plain black in 5 and a half by 10 and a half. And then for this one, the it's just plain gray. This is the back panel. And this one we're going to cut to four by eight. And as always, backed with fusible stabilizer. And remember that this is the one I was telling you that when you, when you lay it down as your applique piece, make sure that it is right side up because it it's, doesn't look all that different from the back um, stabilizer. It probably depends on which stabilizer you're using. I'm using Pellon SF 101 and really the light gray versus the little bit darker gray. <laughs> so just be careful when you, I, in my very first hooped one, I think it was not the hooped. Um, oh, the headstone on the very first headstone, I had it, what I thought was right side up and it turned out it wasn't. And I had to pick it out and start over. So, um, just, use that as a um, heads up to make sure and check the light gray and versus the backing. So this one back panel four by eight as your applique piece. 
And then for our batting, so the final cut size on this one is six and a half by 10 and a half. And so that means we always wanted to have at least a half inch larger. So six and a half by 10 and a half, that means that we want our batting to be seven by 11. So seven by 11 for your batting. I'm using Warm and Natural. Um, Kit, uh, Kimberbell has their own stabilizers and batting now. I haven't tried them yet, but I bet they're great. So you should give them a try if you haven't yet. Um, I should too, I know, I'm <laughs> finishing up what I have. So um, seven by 11 on your batting. All right, and then like I said, get your thread colors ready because we're gonna use lots of them. And I am gonna, um, I'll probably stitch this twice. I'll do at least the quilting twice just to show the people that are using a five by seven hoop how they will do it. Um, a quick visual though, will be um, doing four by six, four by six, two by six. So that would equal to 10 by six. And we want this uh, block to come out as six and a half by 10 and a half as our final cut size. So that means that we want our, our quilting to be that size. So those of us that are not using a five by seven hoop, we are going to go for quilting in six by 10 and we are gonna use Halloween three in a horizontal. So ho Halloween three is that really cute witch one. It's got witches and stars and little swirlies. And in all honesty, the, um, the fabric shells are gonna take up most of the blocks. So we're not gonna see that much of this, unfortunately, but hopefully we can use it on like a border block because it's a really cute quilting design. I like that one a lot. So anyway, um, Halloween three in horizontal in six by 10. Um, I think that's it. We've got our fabric. Um, for our thread, um, they're using white. I will probably at least use a light gray maybe. <laughs> I'm having a hard time using the same color as our fabrics. I like to use something that stands out a bit more, um, but we'll see. I'm trying to go along with how Kimberwell is doing it and their quilt certainly is gorgeous. So um, either white, light gray, maybe even a light orange. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see so anyway on the the witch halloween three so all right let's go ahead and do fabric shelves so one other thing is that i am going to do a small tutorial using so what pro a few of you have seen that from um, when we did vintage boardwalk and and probably other group projects that we've done it's a easy way for me to show you um, this is what it will look like you know so and and how to merge files if you decide to do that how to delete steps if you decide to do that um, so that's a good point so on this one for those that have their largest hoop is an 8 by 12 so if you use an 8 by 12 actually that one won't matter because the 6 by 10 quilting design will fit just fine so um, that one's not an issue it's only an issue if you use an 8 by 12 quilting design or an 8 by 10 quilting design it wouldn't fit but six and a half by ten and a half will fit fine for those that are using an eight by twelve hoop and for those using a five by seven hoop I will give you more information and a separate tutorial just using a five by seven hoop um, and I'll show you on embroider software and then I'll also show you um, using your machine because you can do it either or on your on your software or on your machine either way um, so anyway let's go ahead and get started fabric shelves
Do you know how to make a dress? Me neither. Well, how about if we embroider a dress form instead? <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we have a very easy block today for our candy corn quilt shop. We are going to work on wire dress form and it's literally like a background piece and then some embroidery and then at the end we dress it all up with embellishments. It's going to be really cute. So tell me, do you know how to make a dress? Oh boy, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky if I can sew a straight line. Sewing is really not my thing, but uh, we all have our strengths, right? <laughs> I see these um, ads for dressmaking and I think, oh my little granddaughter, that would be so fun to make, but no. Not only because I don't sew very well, but mostly because I don't need another obsession. Are you like me? Like, I, when would I fit in more things between cycling and embroidery and time with friends and karate and you name it, I, I can't add anything else in. <laughs> so when I see cute little patterns like that, I just, nope, 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 <laughs> move along. <laughs> That's my thought process. So today we're going to do a very simple embroidery block. That is my forte. I can do embroidery and quilting. That's about the extent of my sewing ability. So uh, wire dress form. We are going to use this really cute green fabric with the cauldrons and the writing on it. And we're going to cut that to six and a half by eight and a half. And as always, back it with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers and keep it nice and crisp and and works really well for our quilting blocks. Six and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric. And there's no applique pieces today. This is gonna be such an easy one. So we do need our batting and whenever we're gonna quilt, we use batting. So on the batting, our final cut size of this project is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want our batting to be five by seven. Nice, simple, five by seven, all right? And then for our quilting, I'm going to use the green because that's what they're using in um, the photo on this one. So I'm going to pull this out of my new kit. Pretty excited about it. Um, if you haven't gotten the thread kit, make sure and get one from Oma Darlings. They have them in stock and ready to ship. And I'm pretty excited that I got mine. So um, green for the quilting. And so let's talk about what quilting we're going to use. So on this one, um, we're going to use Halloween one. And like I said, from the start, we're using the Kimberbell guide for what they used on their quilt. So they used, um, Halloween one and that's the one with spiders. And I think it'll be so cute on this, the background of this block, because there's quite a bit of space around. So we'll be able to see this one really well. And the spider webs go all the way to the edge. So this will be a really cute one for this block. So it's Halloween one, a direct download from Kimberbell. And the size, remember, so since our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half, that means we want a quilting design that is four by six. Very simple, four by six, Halloween one, direct download from Kimberbell. And uh, that's it, wire dress form, super easy one today. Let's do it.
Have you ever wished you had your very own quilt shop? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Well, let's at least make a quilt shop embroidery block for our quilt. Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here. And today we are gonna make a quilt shop block for our candy corn quilt shop quilt. Got all that? <laughs> So this one, I would save probably an hour. I'm just guessing. This one's a big one, uh, lots of steps, um, but it is going to be really cute. If you made the Boulevard bench pillow last year or this year, um, that one, it has the same block in it. And it took a lot of time, but it is so cute. And one thing that I noticed that is different on this year's block is that um, the signs are made out of leather instead of felt, which I think is great. I, I like the idea of leather better than felt. Um, it looks more crisp, more clean to me. I think that it'll be nice with this block. So for today, what we're gonna need is our background fabric. And the background fabric for this is the white with orange dots and backed with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers. And the size of this is gonna be 10 and a half by 12 and a quarter. 10 and a half by 12 and a quarter. So um, make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. You're gonna to wanna to use your um, tape or basting stitch on this since it's such a large block. And that's our main fabric. And then we have lots of applique pieces for this one. So if I can grab them all here. All right, the first one is for the roof and make sure and notice that this is directional fabric when you're cutting it. So this one you're gonna want to be eight by three and a half and as always back it with fusible stabilizer for your applique pieces. Um, eight by three and a half for the roof, the black and white squiggly wavy lines. And then for the windows, this one is the yellow lattice and we're going to cut this one to four and a half by six, backed with fusible stabilizer. This is for the windows, like the light coming in through the windows, the yellow lattice. And then for the actual house, it's that pretty blue, uh, purple. Um, this is the one that was from Make Yourself at Home, that quilt. I still haven't finished that quilt. <laughs> I need to get back to that. We'll have to... I don't know, get that one done somehow. But anyway, so the purple, it's got the little flowers on it. And for the house, we want this one to be seven by five and a half and backed with feasible stabilizer, seven by five and a half. And then for the door, it's the black with little white dots. And that one we're gonna cut to two and a half by three and a half, backed with feasible stabilizer and the black with white dots for the door. And then we go to the items in our embellishment kit. Make sure to get your embellishment kit from Oma Darlings. I assume you've already got it, but if not, you're gonna need it for this block. So for the, the uh, dormers, um, so did you know that there's dormers and what's the other um, gable? So actually these are gables. That's funny. Um, the way that I understood it is the gables are the pointy ones and dormers are the rounded. And our new house has the rounded dormer and my husband and I both prefer angles and so we prefer dormers. So it's funny that this is called a dormer. I just noticed that. Anyway, <laughs> back to what we're doing. So for the dormer, you're gonna want your black glitter. And when you use your black glitter, make sure to take off the backing and, and we'll talk about that as we um, work on it, but it's actually the topping. So you can see there's this clear um, plastic sticky on the top of it. And you wanna make sure and take that off before you put down your black glitter applique piece. So for the dormers, black glitter, it's five by three and a half for your cut size, five by three and a half. I don't remember if it already came this way or if I cut it, but five by three and a half. And then we're going to need the white leather for the sign. And like I said, I think that's better than using felt. Um, I like felt, but it 
it just looks crisper to me if you use leather. So um, Kimberbell has the, these really nice leathers. So I think it's great that we're using it for this. So white leather for the sign, it's going to be four and a half by two for your white leather. And you don't want to back these with anything. They come ready to go. And then for the uh, candy corn flowers, we're going to use the iridescent mylar. So you'll find this in your embellishment kit. It's um, just this thin little mylar. And for that, we're going to want this to be six by two, six by two for the iridescent mylar. It'll make our candy corn flowers sparkle. It's very pretty. I made um, my granddaughter a uh, fairy for she had a fairy birthday party and I made a fairy applique shirt for her and I put mylar under the wings on the fairy and oh my gosh it was so pretty I made myself one too <laughs> so mylar is really fun to stitch with don't worry it's not hard to do at all using mylar it at least for me it worked really fine so don't worry about the mylar um, and then the last piece that we're going to need is the uh, clear white um, vinyl. So this one, it's called Sweet as Candy Clear Vinyl. And we're going to use a, a piece that is four and a half by six. Four and a half by six of the clear vinyl. I don't, oh, probably over the windows would make, make sense. That will be used over the windows. All right, and then those are all of the applique pieces, all of the fabrics that we need. As always, we're going to need some batting. So since our final cut size of this project is, sorry, eight and a half by ten and a half, that means that we want a piece of batting that is nine by eleven. Nine by eleven batting. All right, and then we're going to use... Um, lots of colors from our thread kit. If you haven't already, make sure to order the Candy Corn Quilt Shop thread kit from Oma Darlings. They have them in stock and ready to go. I just got mine a couple days ago. I'm pretty excited about it. So um, it makes life so much easier to not have to figure out which threads work with um, which fabrics. And it makes it easy to carry around and move. You don't have to have lots of threads on your desk waiting for you to to stitch. So on this one, we are going to quilt it. And since our final cut size is eight and a half by 10 and a half, that means we want a quilting design that is eight by 10. So the Kimberbell guide is using Halloween two, which is really a perfect one for this block. So I pulled it up in embroidery software to take a look and see what it, what it looked like. And it's got um, ghosts and witch hats and um, the candy corn flowers and you can see them all even though this is a large block the quilt shop is a large block and takes up a lot of room on the fabric you can still see all of those cute designs around it and so it's really perfect and if you did boulevard with me last year we had to move the house down, the quilt shop down to the bottom. And there's nothing on here saying that we need to do that on this one. And there's plenty of quilting up at the top. So as soon as it, just make sure it's centered with the fabric, just like, um, and we'll go over that while we're doing it. But um, when you bring a design in, like you could do it on embroidery software or on your machine, but I'm just gonna do it on my, my machine since we don't have to move it at all. But you will do your quilting design first on your main fabric and then it'll already be centered in your hoop and the design will come um, when you load the, the quilt shop design, that will automatically go to the center too. And so it works out perfectly. So you don't have to do any of that that we had to do last year. Um, I thought there was something else I wanted to tell you. Um, oh, I do. So like I said, eight by 10 quilting, we're using Halloween two. And for those that are using a five by seven hoop, I will add a little diagram so that you can visualize what you're gonna do. But basically you're gonna do four hoopings to figure it out to get eight by 10, it's pretty easy. You're gonna do a four by six up at the top, another four by six next to it, and then down below a four by four and another four by four. So across that will add up to eight, the four by six, four by six, that equals up to eight. And then four by six down and four by four will equal up to 10. So that you'll do all of those like how we did on the fabric shelves, how I gave you that tutorial on the fabric shelves. So you're gonna do that same thing and you're gonna do four hoopings. 
Now, those that have an eight by 12 hoop, I need to let you know that the eight by 10 quilting design will not fit in your eight by 12 hoop. I discussed that on the um, five by seven tutorial using embroidery software. So you could see what I was talking about. That quarter inch all around the sides makes it a half inch larger. So the quilting design, while it's called an eight by 10, it actually is eight and a half by 10 and a half. So all you do, and I showed you on the last tutorial for the fabric shelves, hopefully you got to see that one. All you will do if you have an eight by 12 hoop is you would take out steps three and four. If you have a machine that lets you just bypass it, then you can just bypass the, all it is is number three and number four of the quilting design is the placement stitch and the basting stitch for the quilting design. Uh, I'm sorry, for the main fabric. So you would just take those out. Those are the only two parts. The quilting design fits in eight by 10, the placement and the tack down of the batting fits in eight by 10. It's just three and four, the ones for the main fabric. So if you take those out using embroidery software, you would instead just feel around your batting like I showed on the tutorial and make sure that your main fabric is straight and, and centered well over the batting and then tape it down in place. So the basting stitch is a nice to have, but it's not required and you will need to bypass it to if your biggest hoop is eight by 12. I will probably use my nine by 14 hoop because I'm pretty excited. I've got my dream machine too. Um, but if you have a smaller hoop there, you can do this easily. Like I said, five by seven, you'll do four hoopings. Eight by 12, you would just take out the, the uh, number three and number four quilting steps. So, and if you have a six by 10 as your largest, same thing, do those four um, steps that we're showing you for the five by seven folks, that'll work fine. Um, you could actually even do a little bit bigger. You could probably do like sixes. We'll, we'll figure that out too for you. <laughs> but anyway, so um, the quilt shop and I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. And just real quick for those that are using a five by seven hoop, there's a separate design on the CD that has the quilt shop broken up into two parts. I'm sure you've already seen that, but just in case for the five by seven people for eight by 12 larger, so we'll do the eight by 12 design.
Do you show and share? Do you really? Well, we're going to today. Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing our work on the Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. So today we are going to work on block 11 called Show and Share. So tell me, do you show and share? It's not easy. It's not easy to put yourself out there, but we all have something to share and we all can inspire others. So this one hit home for me because just a couple days ago, we hit the requirements to become an official YouTube channel. Very exciting. And thank you everyone that obsessively watched the videos to help us to meet those watch hour requirements. So that's what this one is about, right? Show and share. And it's it's not easy. <laughs> I don't like being in front of a video camera. I don't like being the center of attention. I like doing things behind the scenes. And it's funny the way that this all started. It's, it's really funny. So a long, when was it? Like July. In July, I posted a picture. Uh, we were doing a group project. The... Um, the birthday bench pillow and I was making one for my granddaughter and I shared information on how to do the quilting and someone commented and said that I wasn't me and um, I was taking someone else's tutorials and something I don't know just something mean and it got me it got me good and it was funny because at the time I responded back and I went yeah, I'm me. I don't know what you're talking about. And then as it sunk in, it really hurt my feelings. I mean, I was doing a lot to give my time to um, make a group project in the group and to try and make it fun and, and show other people how to do things. And um, so what ended up happening is that was the first time that I put my face on the camera. Before that, all of the photos, all of the videos were just photos and how to do things and showing the fabrics and showing whatever and I never was in any of the pictures and that's that was my preference and um, so I made a whole video I, I don't know if you saw it way back in July of last year but um, I did a video showing my craft room and I said everyone show me your craft room and I started the video saying I'm Kristen Som I don't sell anything I'm not trying to um, whatever, whatever, you know, there was just no purpose other than just creating a fun group project and that comment had hurt my feelings. And so, um, that was literally like God's way of pushing me to do more. So, so now I am in, I do a quick little video clip of me in the beginning of every video so that everyone knows this is me. <laughs> so anyway, it's just funny how things happen and how um, you get pushed into situations that you don't necessarily want to be in. And now we're an official YouTube channel and thanks to everybody that, that helped us get there and helped push me. I think over that time, I had like 60 messages. I think I counted 60 messages over a couple of months time of people pushing me to create the Kristen Creates group and to be able to do group projects. And, you know, it's just amazing that the absolute kindness that people have shown and how much fun that we're having together. And I'm just so appreciative. So let's get past all that. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're going to do today. So today's project is called Show and Share. It's on page 24 of our Kimberbell uh, Candy Corn Quilt Shop booklet. And, uh, you know, I'm using these little bags. I've had some questions on them. And you can organize your, your pro project however you want to. I'm doing by day and um, all the information is in our booklet. I went ahead and pre-cut and the like I said before the biggest uh, benefit for me is that my craft room is staying so organized I'm just loving that so that's pretty fun so for today what we're going to need the first one is this uh, light gray uh, with stripes on it 
and we are going to cut this one. This is our background main fabric, and this one we're gonna to cut to six and a half by 10 and a half. And as always, back it with fusible stabilizer. On these light ones, just a tip, if you have little strings on there, make sure to clean off the back before you put your fusible stabilizer on, because if you get a dark thread under there, you might see it over, you know, if it gets in between the fabric and the stabilizer on the back. So just always check your back, make sure that it's all clear of fabrics before, or of threads before you put your fusible stabilizer on. And as you know, I'm a big believer on fusible stabilizer in the back of each fabric, including my applique pieces, and mine work out really well, so don't fix what isn't broken. So light gray stripe, not really stripes, but kind of lines all over, six and a half by ten and a half for this main fabric piece. And then we have two applique pieces, so there's this plain black. It's not the one with the witches on it, it's just plain black fabric. And I used two pieces of fusible stabilizer on the back of this one. So this one we're gonna cut to four by three and a half. My stomach is growling, I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> I need to eat lunch. Four by three and a half for this plain black fabric. And then we need one glitter piece. And as always, don't forget to take off uh, the topping of this. I should always start these before the, the video. <laughs> so it's not the easiest thing to get it off. Take off the topping. It's a clear topping. And um, we're going to cut this cute little purple glitter sheet to two by two. And I'm just trying to show you to make sure. There we go. Make sure and take off that plastic top coating. And we'll go over in pictures that you do want to iron it and, and make it... Um, flat on your fabric. We'll go over that part in pictures. So two by two of this pretty purple glitter. I love this. All right. And then batting. So for our batting, we look at our final cut size. So our final cut size of this project is four and a half by eight and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is five by nine. It's always got to be at least a half inch larger so that it'll tack down and then we trim it. So it doesn't really matter what size, just you want at least a half inch. So uh, five by nine for your batting. And then for this one, for our quilting, while we quilt it in the hoop, we're gonna use Wavy 2 today. And I really like that one. I was hoping that we would get to use that one on this project. So Wavy 2, and we're gonna use that in four by eight because our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half. So that means we want our quilting design that is four by eight because that extra half inch is the part that goes in our seams, the extra, the seam allowance, I should say. We're gonna cut away the batting, cut away everything, and it's just gonna be, um, our fat, our main fabric and that we will use our half inch seam allowance. So four by eight for this one and show and share. And this one does have some special cut instructions, but we'll go over that with photos. We've already done it before and we finished our candy corn quilt. This one was big. <laughs> oh my gosh. I haven't, I haven't finished the tutorial for this, but you'll see it before you see this show and share. But this one, I think I took 106 photos <laughs> to be able to make the tutorial for this one. It was a big one. And so I'm glad that this one is done, but how cute is it? I love it. And I love it with the leather instead of the felt that we used on the Boulevard quilt shop. So very, very cute. I like this one. Nice, nice big block. So, all right. So today, show and share and make sure to share your photos and inspire everyone else that hasn't made this candy corn quilt shop and and share your photos to make it fun for all of us because you know it's more fun together and real quick for anyone using a five by seven hoop for show and share you're gonna want two hoopings of four by four four by four on the top, four by four on the bottom, and it'll equal four by eight for our final cut size of four and a half by eight and a half.
Have you been super excited to make the witches for Candy Corn Quilt? Me too. It's finally time. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we get to start on the witches today for our Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. So we are on block 12 and the first witch is called M.E. Witch. I assume that means machine embroidery witch. Anyway, it is so cute. I think we have three or four of them. And oh gosh, they're cute. I'm very excited about them. And they're very simple too. So we will use embellishments after the fact, but for the beginning of them, it's just embroidery for the most part. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna need today. So make sure to get your thread kit if you haven't already. Oma Darlings has these in stock, the official Candy Corn Quilt Shop thread kit. And my purple is in my machine, but there's a cute purple, which is one of the colors that we're going to need for today. So you don't have to pick out, figure out what's going to work with the different fabrics and such. And everything goes together perfectly. So it's a great thread kit. So M.E. Witch, it is on page 26. And what we're going to need for today is a nice big background quilt, background fabric. This is going to be cut to eight and a half by ten and a half, and it's that light gray with all the lines all over it. Make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. These these blocks that have mostly embroidery, you're going to definitely want to make sure to um, back it well with stabilizer because you don't want puckers. That would be such a bummer after getting this far. So we're already 11 blocks done. How cool is that? And if you recall from the beginning, I told you, I think there's only like 29 in the beginning for the official like applique box blocks and traditional blocks. I think there's only like 29 and then we've got some border blocks. So we're jamming along really well and having so much fun with it. So light gray fabric with lines all over it back it with fusible stabilizer in cut size eight and a half by ten and a half all right and then the only other thing that we need at this point is the black glitter applique piece so this is that black glitter that we take off the top of and we iron it down after it's in place to make sure that it's um, adhered kind of I don't really know it's not really adhering because there isn't sticky stuff on it I think it's just so that it lays flat I'm not totally sure about that to tell you the truth um, anyway so make sure to take off this top um, plastic piece I just tore mine doesn't matter though so all that we're going to put on our applique is the black glitter part so this one the black glitter you want this to be cut to three and a half by three three and a half by three black glitter. And you don't back these with fusible stabilizer, just, just glitter. And I've been asked before about needles. I use my regular needle for glitter vinyl, for leather, uh, for felt. Mine, mine works fine. So every machine's a little bit different, but mine, mine's not picky as long as I use the right needle. So I'll actually try and add a picture of what needles that I use that work well for me. But again, every machine is different. So um, just that one applique piece, and then we need our batting. So our final cut size on this is six and a half by eight and a half. So that means that we want a batting that is seven by nine, seven by nine for your batting piece. All right, and I'm currently using um, Warm and Natural, but I've used others and they work well. And I think Oma Darlings is gonna send me some stabilizer to check out the Kimberbell stabilizers. So that should be fun. I've always been curious how those work. I'm sure that they're great. So I'll let you know though. All right, so the one applique piece and um, we're gonna quilt this. So for our quilting today, we're gonna use Halloween two. I love that one, Halloween two. And we're gonna use it in six by eight since our final cut size is six and a half by eight and a half. Six by eight, Halloween two. That's a direct download directly from Kimberbell. Um, and I think that's it. We get to do our first switch today. Let's get started. For those using a five by seven hoop on this one, you're gonna wanna do a four by six quilting design twice, four by six and four by six. And you're gonna do it sideways so that you get that full six inch length. 
but um, the, the length is gonna be vertical, so it's four by six this way, four by six to be able to equal out to six by eight. So six horizontally, eight length vertically, um, and that will work really well for you. Four by six and four by six, do it twice.
So tell me, do you ever get a little witchy? <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we're continuing our work on the witches of Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So today we get to work on Boulevard Witch. So it's from Boulevard, right? So when we embellish it after the fact, it's going to have the Boulevard pillow that most of us made last year. So that will be so cute. This is my favorite witch out of all the ones that we're going to make for this Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So tell me, do you get a little witchy sometimes? Yes, I said witchy <laughs> with the W. So I do, I think everybody probably does. For me, I can go really well without sleep. I can go overworked, whatever. I can, I can do pretty well, but if I don't eat, I will definitely get witchy. That That's my downfall. So if my husband and I get in an argument, he'll ask me, did you eat today? <laughs> and I'm pretty good about eating, but I have hypoglycemia. So for me, that's the downfall is when, um, my hair's sticking up. <laughs> so when um, I haven't eaten like every few hours, I my glucose levels drop and, and that's it for me. Not very nice after that. So always make sure I have food. <laughs> I keep like little energy bars and stuff in my purse and in my car, pretty much everywhere just in case. So anyway, so how about you? Do you get witchy sometimes? What is your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get started with Boulevard Witch. It is on page 27, or she, she is on page 27. And we're going to start with our main fabric. It's that light gray uh, with lines all over it again. And don't forget to take away any pieces before you put on your fusible stabilizer. You definitely want fusible stabilizer on these witch ones because there's a lot of embroidery. This one actually has some applique to it also. So this one, we are going to cut our main fabric to six and a half by 10 and a half. And as always, back it with fusible stabilizer, six and a half by 10 and a half. And then we have a couple of applique pieces today. So the first one is the skirt and it's just that plain black fabric. And we're gonna cut this to three and a half by three Back it with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers, three and a half by three for this black fabric. And then we are going to do the corset, which is so cute. This purple, I, I even centered a little flower on mine. So the corset, this purple fabric, I don't know what it's called, but it's got little doodles on it. And uh, that one we are gonna cut to two by two and a half, two by two and a half for the corset. And yes, I backed it with fusible stabilizer as well. And then the glitter piece. I love this purple glitter. I'm really a pink girl, but did you know I used to love purple, actually lavender specifically before I went crazy over pink. You know what started my pink obsession? On my 40th birthday, I got my first ever bicycle, my first road bicycle, and it was pink. It, they happened that year to have a pink bicycle available by Trek, and that's what started it all. I changed everything to pink. I, I even had a pink wall in my, in my craft room that my husband wasn't too happy about, <laughs> but I did. All right, so back, or cut off, rip off, rip back the um, plastic, on the top of our purple glitter and we're just going to use the glitter piece for our applique and this glitter is for the hat and for the hat we're going to cut this piece to three and a half by three and a half for our our glitter applique piece three and a half by three and a half and that's it for our applique pieces but as always we need some batting so our final cut size what is our final cut size of this cute little witch our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half. So that means that we want a batting piece that is five by nine. Five by nine for the batting. And then we're gonna quilt it. And for this one, we are gonna use Celebration 2. I think that'll be so cute. 
um, celebration two and we're going to use four by eight in vertical. So the celebration two comes either in a horizontal version or a vertical version. We're going to use the vertical. So for those of you that have a five by seven hoop, you're going to want to do two of the four by fours. You still will use the vertical, but you'll do a four by four and then a four by four to equal out to four by eight. And that's it. Let's do my favorite witch. This is the Boulevard Witch on page 27. She's so cute. I can't wait to put that pillow on her. I think she'll look so cute. All right, let's get started. And did you see I'm wearing my witch shirt for you today for my favorite witch block? So it says most likely to wear the hat. And this design is by So Cute Appliques. I always get questions of where I got the design for my shirt. So there is a link, there's a bunch of links in, in the video description. I always try to include all the information that people are gonna ask. And that's also where you subscribe, hit that little subscribe button. Um, but make sure to look in that video description. It's got all the information about quilting and about what's coming next, our next project.
Are you ready to make another witch? I am. Let's do it. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our candy corn quilt shop quilt. So today we are going to make our last witch. So cute. It is on page, she is on page 29 and she's called Haunt Witch. She's our 14th block and if you look at the page after, the next page, page 30, I, what she's holding up, I think it's a takeoff from Kimberbell's first quilt. I'm not totally sure about that, but I heard the story um, that they, her si Kim's sister, Chris, has a quilt shop, My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, and they did a quilt that Kim, she's had this empty space. There's this whole story behind it and I only know little bits of it, but supposedly there was a space open on their new wall at the, at the quilt shop. And she said, oh, I can't have this empty space. I need a quilt, what should we do? And Kim said, well, why don't we do a mystery quilt? And there's this whole story behind it. It's so cute that she just said, well, what will it be of? And Kim said, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll decide as we go. And I think that this quilt that the Haunt Witch is holding is a takeoff from that first quilt. I could be making that up. I, I seem to recall hearing something like that. Either way, it's super cute. And if you look on uh, Kimberbell's website in the vault, you can download, I think this is that same design that you can download and make an actual pillow. I think I need to do that because it's pretty darn cute. So Haunt Witch, and we are gonna go ahead and start with the products that we need for today. So for this one, we need, again, that light gray with the lines all over it. And we're gonna cut this to eight and a half by 10 and a half and back it with fusible stabilizer and eight and a half by 10 and a half for that main fabric. And then we have two applique pieces for her little cute skirt. We're gonna use these orange dots and uh, back it with fusible stabilizer. And this one, we're gonna cut to four and a half by four and a half for the skirt applique. And then we need uh, for her hat, we're going to use a glitter sheet and make sure and take off the topping of the um, glitter. We're just going to use the, the black glitter part for her hat. And that one we're going to cut to four by three and a half for this applique piece, four by three and a half. And as always, we need some batting. So for our batting, our final cut size of this, let me look real quick, is six and a half by eight and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is seven by nine. Seven by nine for the batting. And then we're gonna quilt it. And for the quilting today, we're gonna use Halloween three, so cute, in six by eight, and we're gonna use the horizontal design. So on that, if you're using a five by seven hoop, you're gonna want to do two of the four by six designs. So it will be sideways for you. It's gonna, to get that six inch width. So it's gonna be really six by four and then six by four so that it'll equal out to six by eight. And our final cut size of this project is six and a half by eight and a half. So make sure that you have your thread kit from Oma Darlings, our sponsor for this project. How nice that she's our very first sponsor. I hope that you're making sure to support her. Um, by the way, she told me that the, the discount code, Kristen Creates is the discount code. And that code is good throughout our entire time of working on this quilt. So it's 10% off. And it's not even just the candy corn items, it's everything that you buy. I think it excludes machines, but she said that she'll work with you on a machine if you buy a machine from her. But it's on everything that you're gonna buy. So think of like stabilizers, thread kit. Did you get your backing for your, fa for your quilt? We need backing fabric. So everything that you want to buy from um, Oma Darlings, use that discount code all during the time that we're working on this project. So that was very generous of her, very generous, super nice. All right, so we are going to work on Haunt Witch. It's our 14th block and the last cute little witch. They're all gonna be together. Did you see that in the um, cover picture? 
so cute. This is going to be a really fun one. So I'm wearing my witch shoe today. Um, I don't, um, embroidery boutique, I think is where I got it. And I will add a link in the description if you want to check out that design. Uh, I made this probably five years ago, but it's just so cute. I really like it. All right. Uh, that's it. So haunt witch, we're going to get started on that one.
what brand of embroidery machine do you have? It might matter in this next one. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our work on the Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. So today we are going to start the leather applique blocks. It really means that we're just jamming along on this. So the first leather applique block is the sewing machine. So tell me, what brand of sewing machine do you have or embroidery machine? Mine is together. Mine does sewing and embroidery. So mine is the Brother Dream Machine 2. And the reason that I ask is you might want to make sure and know what machine you have and where to download some special effects for this block. So, so on it, they on the CD, they have um, right along with where all the regular embroidery files for the Candy Corn Quilt Shop, there's also some add-on files. If you choose, this is totally up to you, but on your sewing machine, you can have a cute little saying that goes along with what brand of machine that you have. So like mine for Brother, if I recall, it said, oh, so how cute. So for Bernina, it's Boo Nina. And for Brother, it's Bruther. Let me see, Bruther. I don't have my glasses on, but cute little sayings. Baby Lock says Batty Lock. And Elna says Ikna. <laughs> there, there's lots of really cute ones. So... We'll add that in, and again, that's totally optional. You can do the design as it is, or you can personalize it a little bit. So this is for the sewing machine block. It's on page 31. It's block number 15 for us. And let's go ahead and talk about what we'll need for this block. It's a very simple block. So for our background fabric, it's this orange stripe fabric, and make sure and back it with fusible stabilizer, orange stripes. And this one we're going to cut to 10 and a half by eight and a half. So it's going to go this way. <laughs> I should hold it the right way. 10 and a half by eight and a half. Cut this um, background fabric and make sure and add fusible stabilizer on this. And then for our applique piece, it's just one applique piece and it's leather. Oh, it's so soft. So very nice. This is very nice. Um, you don't want to add fusible stabilizer or anything like that to leather. Leave it as is. Um, and we're gonna cut this piece of black leather to seven and a half by five and a half. And this is what our machine will be made out of, seven and a half by five and a half. And then for this block, we are going to use batting like we do on all of them. And the final cut size of this project is eight and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is nine by seven, nine by seven for our batting. And then for our quilting today, so we are going to quilt this with Halloween 4, and we're going to use 6 by 8. So since this cut size is 6.5 by 8.5, we're going to cut it. We're going to use our quilting design that is 6 by 8. It's really going to be 8 by 6, but we're going to do it sideways. So um, like I said, I will share information about how to personalize your sewing machine. If you choose, that's up to you. Um, or you can do it as is. Either way, will be super cute. And we are get to use our first black leather today. That'll be fun. All right, so that's sewing machine. And let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, I have the Brother Dream Machine and Dream Machine 2. I bought it used. It was barely used. It was from... Um, they had done a class or something, and so I got a great deal on it. It worked out really well for me. But this is my original machine. See that tiny little, <laughs> it was a Brother Runway. That was my first sewing machine. And I actually bought that just so I could make the Hello Sunshine quilt because I needed a sewing machine to be able to sew all the blocks together. I didn't know how to sew, I didn't know anything, but I bought that little $100 machine off Amazon and it did die before I finished out that quilt. It didn't, it, it still works, but it doesn't do a lot of things. And um, so I was able to get this dream machine too and I absolutely love it. It was so great. They had brother financing, which they do. Um, I think at least a few times a year and I, I I don't think I had to put anything down maybe I don't remember but um, I get to pay for this for five years and as long as I make my payments which I make larger than they they need to be then um, you don't have any there's no interest or anything so look out for those special deals from brother and baby lock and 
I'm in love with my machine. I absolutely love it. Biggest hoop size is nine and a half by 14. Get all of the Kimberbell projects done on this machine. It's so much fun. So what is your machine? And are you going to personalize your leather applique block? <laughs> Real quick, I realized that the um, brother and Bernina and all those little add-ons for the sewing machine are in the files in the cd so you don't have to um, do any adjusting on embroidery software you can download it straight to your usb stick put it in your machine and uh, run that specialty item on your sewing machine at kimberbell thought of everything <laughs>
ready to try a new quilting design today. This one's new for me. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we're continuing our fun time with Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So today we are going to work on block 16. It is on page 32. Oh my gosh, we are so far along. Did you know that we only have four more sets of blocks because one of them the pumpkin um there's three blocks but four more sets of regular blocks for this quilt that's it um then we'll do the traditional blocks and more on that later but anyway so um did you see i have a new shirt today i haven't made a new applique shirt in a long time and so i decided to make one last night and it's a cute little uh, beetle car, like my car, and it has pink flowers. It's actually pink with white flowers, but mine is pink with pink flowers, my actual car. So anyway, it says, Rye, find, find adventure. And I added the wording and I added the little arrow. And I think, I think it's pretty cute. I'm excited to finally have a, a new um, shirt. All of my applique shirts are, are quite old. Really, I started the quilting and then <laughs> everything else just kind of um, gets left behind. So anyway, I'm having fun with this quilt. Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So anyway, today we are going to do Thimble Flowers. Thimble Flowers on page 32. And um, well, let's talk about what we're going to need for this one. So it's a very simple applique block, just one applique piece. Uh, so we're going to start with our background fabric that is this black and it has the scroll and the witch on it. And so it is directional. So when you cut it, make sure um, to notice which way that that witch is going. You don't want an upside down witch. Um, so scroll, scrolls, little scrolls, moon, stars, and a witch. Mine has one witch, actually one and a half, depending on how you cut your fabric. But anyway, you probably can't see that. I'm not sure, but you want your witch facing upwards. You don't want an upside down witch. So as always, back it with fusible stabilizer. And um, then for our one, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to say. So we're going to cut this. <laughs> your cut size for this one, for, for your main fabric, is going to be eight and a half by six and a half for this one. Back it with fusible stabilizer. And then one applique piece, and it's this silver gray leather. How fun is that? So we're gonna use this on the thimble. And this one is gonna be cut to six and a half by three for your leather. Don't back this with fusible stabilizer. Don't back it with anything. Leave it as is for this piece of leather. All right, and then for our batting, because we're gonna quilt it, so for our batting, the final cut size of this project is six and a half by four and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that's at least five by seven, at least five by seven for your batting. All right. And then make sure to um, grab your um, thread kit. Hopefully you ordered that from Oma Darlings. They still have plenty in stock. It's the official Candy Corn Quilt Shop thread kit. And it just makes it so easy to know which threads go with it. So for this, we're really only going to need green and either dark gray or black. It's impossible to tell on that tiny little block. Um, there's a little box on the page that shows you what color that they suggest. And um, for the black and dark gray, they're just too close. If you look, I said on a previous video that if you look on page three of the booklet, there is um, larger boxes so that you can see um which like it's very easy to use this and compare it to like the oranges because there's two oranges so you can use that on page three to try and decipher which um color that they're suggesting but on the black and dark gray it's really impossible so use whatever you think works best and um so for this one we're going to quilt it and I'm pretty excited. So we're going to use a new quilting design that we haven't used in one of my tutorials before. And it is called Hobby 2. I just bought it. And I noticed that some people are saying that they've had issues with downloading from the Kimberbell um, background quilting site. And um, I did have to hit um, the button a few times for it to refresh. 
but and it used to, and this is where I think the hiccup is, but I could be wrong, but um, it used to be that when you um, order it, there's an immediate download button, and I haven't had that for a while now, and so I think that's probably why people are thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't get my, um, my background quilting design. But what I do is I go and I look at my email, and I immediately get the email from Kimberbell, and there is a download button. On that email and that always works for me so no problems with that and I know that some people have said on the Kimberbell group that there's an issue with their site and you can always contact customer service they're fantastic but um, but check your email because for me that download now button works great so no problems so that's to get hobby two. it's that really cute one it's got spools and needles on it so very cute for this um, so we are going to use, like I said, our final cut size is six and a half by four and a half. So that means that we want a quilting design that is four by six. It's really six by four, but it'll be on your CD, not your CD. Sorry. It's a direct download. It'll be on your computer as a four by six, but we're going to turn it sideways and it's going to come sideways because of our fabric. So don't worry. <laughs> four by six in hobby two. And I'm going to use... Um, my five by seven hoop. So, um, those that have a five by seven hoop as your biggest, you don't have to do any alterations. You don't have to double hoop or anything like that for this one. Nice, easy block. So let's go ahead and get started.
you like those little pumpkin candies? You know, the ones that taste like candy corn, but they're shaped like pumpkins. Well, how about if we make some pumpkin embroidery instead? Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here, and we're continuing with Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So today we are going to do the blocks 17, 18, and 19. They're the pumpkin pin cushion. These are so cute. So we are going to use flex foam. I think it's called flex foam. Yes, flexi foam with these blocks today. So I've used this before um, when I was doing the um, the little felt friends, those animal um, ornaments for Christmas. Those were so cute. And I used that for this. I think that was my first time. And I thought they were so cute that I bought quite a bit of this flexi foam to get ready for other projects. So this will come in your embellishment kit. You should already have this in your embellishment kit that you hopefully got from Oma Darlings. And uh, we're gonna need three of these. And for this flex foam, the size is gonna be four by three and a half. And like I said, three of them, because we're making three of the pumpkins. So for the main fabric on these pumpkins, we are going to cut these to six and a half by six and a half, and you need three of them. And it's that gray chevron, kind of, not really. I don't know what you call it, but gray and dark gray. Um, three pieces, all of them backed with fusible stabilizer and cut to six and a half by six and a half, three of these. And then for our applique pieces, we need three of the first set. So um, they're, all three pumpkins have these as our first set of appliques, and the size on this is three and a half by three, and it's that orange cauldron words on it. And like I said, three of these cut to three and a half by three and all of them backed with fusible stabilizer. So you'll need these for one for each of the applique pumpkins. And then each of those pumpkins also has their own applique piece. So on those, we're gonna cut the, um, the second set B of fabrics to four by three and a half. And those are the orange with white dots, the orange doodles, and the orange flowers. So on this four by three and a half and all of them backed with fusible stabilizer, those are for our, our pumpkins and for the second applique piece. These are a little bit larger because it's gonna be more than one part, so, but of that same pumpkin. And then um, as always, we need our batting because we're going to quilt these. And our final cut size on this, I want to say four and a half. Yep, four and a half by four and a half for our final cut size. And so that means that we want a piece of batting that's at least five by five. So three of them, because there's three different pumpkin blocks that we're making. So three pieces at five by five minimum for your batting. And then we're going to quilt these. And two of them, we're going to use Halloween four for our background quilting. And since our final cut size is four and a half by four, that we that means that we want a quilting design that's four by four. And like I said, two of them are gonna use Halloween four, and then one of them uses wavy three. And on the wavy three, we're gonna use the horizontal version. Horizontal on wavy three. All right, and then um, we need our thread as always. So this one's got a few colors and um, make sure that you've ordered your um, thread kit from Oma Darlings for the Candy Corn Quilt Shop. And tell me, so do you like those pumpkins? Those, um, they're, they're those little candies that uh, are shaped as pumpkins, but really they taste like candy corn. I'm curious, do you like those? My son loves them. My son loves candy corn. Um, actually, I like candy corn too. I'm not a super big fan of the, the pumpkins for some reason. I saw, before we started this project, I saw um, candy corn that was in like candy apple flavor, I think it was called, something like that, and it looked really good. I should have bought it because now I haven't seen it again. <laughs> that looked yummy. So tell me, do you like those? So let's go ahead and get started on our project today. We're going to do blocks 17, 18, and 19 and make some pumpkin pin cushions. Hey, Kimberbell friends. So for those of you that might want to 
uh, merge a couple of the pin cushions together to save on stabilizer, save on time. You probably know how from our previous um, embroidery software tutorials, but just in case this should only take a few minutes. Uh, what I've decided to do is I'm going to do one of the pin cushions, um, pumpkin pin cushion blocks um, by itself. And then I'm going to merge two of them so that you can see both ways of doing it. So um, plus if you merge all three, I used my nine, four, nine by 14 hoop to merge all three and it was really tight. Um, I, I would be concerned about the main fabric overlapping and trying to keep everything separated. So for me, I think um, just doing two of them in one hoop is sufficient on saving on time. So anyway, so real quick, how to do that. So you, um, I'm using So What Pro embroidery software and um, up here at this title bar, you, I'm going to look up, by the way, you probably remember my monitor is higher than the video camera. So go to file open, and then you're going to first open your um, quilting design. So let's see here, documents. Right, so the one that we're using two of is Halloween four. So I'm gonna open Halloween four in four by four. All right, so there's the four by four and it automatically opens to a five by seven hoop. So I'm gonna go up here to this um, button that looks like a hoop and I'm going to change the hoop size. And I'm gonna use my seven by 12 hoop um, just to get the length. In the six by 10, it, it's a little bit tight. So you can definitely do it in a six by 10. My only concern with having a tighter hoop is um, your main fabric goes over that um, placement quite a bit over. And so you'd have to be really careful to make sure that nothing overlaps. Um, and, and it's easy to do, definitely something that you can do, but um, it's easier to just use a bigger hoop if you have that option. All right, so um, you saw I just grabbed all of it and I'm moving it out of the way. I'm moving it up toward the top so that I can merge in another one. All right, so, you know, one thing actually, um, it's easier, let's, let's not do that. Let's put it in the center. If you open one and move it and then open another one and move it and then add in the pumpkin. And it's harder to center that pumpkin. So actually what I'm going to do is I've got my four by four right in the center and you can see the little lines here um, vertically and horizontally. By the way, I'm going to make it so you can see my whole hoop size. So I'm hitting the shift button on my keyboard and scrolling with my the scroll button on my mouse. And that makes it so that I can um, make the, of course now it's not doing it. <laughs> oh, maybe, okay, sorry. Um, so moving the mouse button and holding the shift uh, button makes it so that you can zoom in or zoom out. Other, the other option is down here at the bottom, um, but that just takes time. All right, so it's right back in the center. And so right now I'm gonna go ahead and go file merge and merge in the pumpkin. And just a heads up there, when you go to uh, candy corn, candy corn quilt shop, um, when you go in here to your candy corn, there's this pumpkin pin cushion also. So make sure to go into the quilt file because that's a whole different thing. That's a secondary um, design. So that go into your quilt shop and then find your four by four pumpkin pin cushion and merge it in. And you can see it automatically goes right to the center and that just makes it easier. So then you can um, drag it and um, like highlight all, select all, and um, then move all of them together. And that just makes it a lot easier than um, having to center between the little bits because you won't have that those center guides if you if you do it the other way separately. All right, so now we have all of that together. So actually, before I move it, let's put it back to the center. I don't know if it matters, but um, it'll be easier to do it twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a file save. File, save as, always save as. 
because then if you save over it, you're gonna, whatever your first thing that you opened, which was our, our quilting, it would now have this pumpkin on it and that's gonna make it pretty hard to use it again, right? So um, file save as, and give it a different name, save it wherever you want it to have it. And um, like I did it in my regular quilt shop. I already did this, that's why I know, but um, so in my quilt shop, so I made a little folder, you can right here, create new folder. And I made one that says with quilting and then I named it um, pumpkin, pumpkin, pin cushion with Halloween four. All right, so then it's got the quilting and the pumpkin and I'm doing a save as, so it's not messing up my existing file and I've already done it. So um, we'll just do it again. All right, so now you can go ahead and um, highlight all of it, move it out of the way up toward the top. All right, so up to, up, I'm sorry. Move your, make sure you've got all of it selected when you move it. So up here and outside of the way and then go to file merge. And now the easiest thing is to do the one that you already just created, the one that's got the quilting and the pumpkin. So click on that, see it's got the quilting and the pumpkin and open that and that's merging another one. And you can see it goes right to the center again. So we're just gonna move that down to the bottom. All right, so now we've got our two. So as you can see, we have a lot of room in, in the middle and that's how we want it because of the, the main fabric being larger, you want it to be able to have room without overlapping. Um, you're still gonna have to watch it a little bit more carefully than you would when you're doing just one in a hoop, but having some room makes it easier. All right, so the other thing I wanna point out to you is notice that we now have 38 steps. <laughs> So what it's gonna do is it's gonna do this whole first one and then do the whole second one. And that's totally fine. You can leave it like that and it'll be great um, because you're saving on stabilizer. But if you also wanna save on some time, then you can merge the, the designs together. You can reorder, that's the right word, reorder the steps. So remember how on our previous tutorials, I've always told you that this green, tealish green, is um, our, our uh, stippling design, the, the quilting design. Here, I'll click on one. So see that, that's your quilting design. So that's always your marker of this is the first one, this is the second one. And then if you look also, half of 38 is 19. So this means that this is the last step of the first design. So after, so you can see it's that little top of the pin. So if you were to click on the very next one, which is number 20, then it's gonna start on the next one. So now you know that the teal green is the end of the, the quilting design and the purple is the end of the whole design, the whole first um, part, this whole first block. All right, so we're gonna use that as our guide. So really easy, you just kind of have to pay attention a little bit, make sure that um, you're focused and not like doing a bunch of things when you're doing this, because then you'll get them out of order. So just remember, quilting design and the main thing you want to remember here is this purple all right because that is the end of the first design so we're going to take number 20 which is always our, our, our the first one is the placement stitch for the batting and you hit your shift button and you move this one up and you're just going to move it up to um, number two so you can see when you click on it now you have your placement for your batting on the first block and your placement of your batting for your second block and you want those together right because then you can merge them together and join them together and make it easy to do both so we're going to keep doing that so everything after the purple we're going to individually bring it up to where it goes all right so this one goes with the next yellow one up here the colors helps after the purple is this next one and it goes with this other blue one. And then this yellow goes with this yellow up here. And then we're gonna bring the teals together. And it just always goes right after. It really doesn't matter if it goes before or after, but it's easier to me to keep them together in, in the right order. All right, so now you can see we're on our pumpkin. I was worried that it, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> 
anyway um so now we're going to be on our pumpkin so again we're just going to keep following and we've already done the quilting design so we're going to do these these next which is the placement for the pumpkin so 25 goes up to under 11. all right and then yellow with its yellow counterpart blue with its counterpart yellow with its counterpart you can tell because they're doubled up right so it's always going to be like this one doesn't have a double so you know that this blue goes with that blue it's easy once you get the hang of it i know it can look a little bit intimidating and, and um it's not though it's really very easy all right so then the green with the green brown with the brown okay And I already did all of this earlier. So when I save as, I'm just going to save it again. But um, I just started on it and thought, oh, people might need a little reminder of how to do this. And it only takes a few minutes. So look, we still have our 38 designs, but see how they're all doubled up now and they're all together. You can leave it like that if you want. You can leave it on the previous one where they're all separated. Um, but to make it easy and to make it quick, we can join them, right? So we would go up to here, edit, join threads. And then it says, join all adjacent threads of the same color. And you say, okay, so right now we have 38 steps and now we're down to 19. Easy. So the only thing that you would do differently is there's not gonna be pauses for you to be able to put your fabrics down. So you would put them down together. When you do the first one, you do the second one, or you hit that little, the, the green button on your machine, the go button, hit that button and it'll pause it so that you can put it down or make sure it's all straight or whatever. Whatever works for you. This is not required at all. You can do all three pumpkins separately, perfectly fine, no problem at all. Or you can merge them and have it be a little bit quicker of a process and learn something new. Totally up to you. Like I said, I'm using So What Pro embroidery software. I bought it tons of years ago from SNS Computing. I think it was like $60. Um, and it's just user friendly, very, very easy to learn. So just this is just a little add on if you wanted to do this. That's all. All right, let's get back to sewing.
Have you tried the new Kimberbell Velveteen yet? I haven't. This will be my first time. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we're continuing with our Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. Today we are going to work on block 20. It's called Sit and Stitch. It's on page 35. Wow, 35. Um, so Sit and Stitch on page 35. It is the Velveteen Couch. So on that, have you ever used the, the Kimberbell Velveteen yet? This is going to be my first time. I'm, I'm pretty interested to, to see. I've heard different things about it. So let's go ahead and talk about the block and what we're going to need today. So we're going to start with our main fabric and on this one it is the gray linen and we're going to cut that to ten and a half by eight and a half, ten and a half by eight and a half for the linen and as always back it with fusible stabilizer. You definitely want to do that on these big pieces. You want to make sure to not have puckers. So the linen ten and a half by eight and a half backed with fusible stabilizer. And then we have one applique and for that applique we actually need this flexifoam. So the flexifoam is in your embellishment kit and it's also available at craft stores if you didn't get the embellishment kit. Hopefully you got the embellishment kit from uh, Oma Darlings. It's got everything that you're going to need. Look at the buttons. Oh my gosh, so cute. Um, so flexifoam and our flexifoam piece is going to be seven and a half by three for our flexifoam and i don't have by so i'm sure people are going to ask about the needles my needles work fine on this there's a link in the description of where i get my needles it's the regular needles they are the perfect durability needles the pd they're um like titanium coated, something like that. I don't remember. They're strong and they work really well and I use them for everything. So um, I'm not worried at all about using Flexifoam. So seven and a half by three for the Flexifoam piece and it's in your embellishment kit for you. And then for the Velveteen couch, so this piece is going to be seven and a half by three and it's the Velveteen. And you have an option so if you don't want to use the velveteen did you see that in your fabric kit there is a plain mustard um fabric for you if if you choose to just use that and and i think most people are doing the velveteen but they gave you an option and it's actually for if anyone didn't get the embellishment kit then you have a piece of fabric in your fabric kit that you can use for the couch so you're all set either way it's totally optional whatever you choose to do um, so we had a tip from Sharon, Sharon Burke in our group said that it is really helpful to use water soluble stabilizer over the top of the velveteen. It, it's not a high pile, so I'm curious why we would need it, but I only have this little piece, so I'm not going to chance it. If I had more, I actually would, um, do both just to see so that I can give you more information, but this is the only piece I have. So I'm going to take the chance and be careful. I'm going to be careful and um, go ahead and put water soluble stabilizer on the top. So water soluble, I didn't grab it from my, my stash, but it's that um, clear, um, easy stabilizer that you put over the top. You generally use it with fleece and minky, especially minky. Um, so maybe it's just, even though it's not a heavy pile, maybe it's just to keep it from moving the stitches because minky especially, it moves a lot. So maybe that's why, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Do what works for you. Water soluble on the top or not. It's up to you. I'm going to probably do it on the top of mine. So, um, seven and a half by three for the velveteen. And like I said, there's also fabric in your kit if you choose to not make yours with velveteen, but I've never used the velveteen. I'm pretty interested in it. It looks really cool and it's so soft. So I'm definitely going to give it a try. So for this one, we need batting and for our batting, I didn't even look at what our final cut size is yet. Our final cut size is eight and a half by six and a half. So our batting, we want to be seven by nine, seven by nine for your batting and at least seven by nine, I should say. And we are going to quilt this one. So this one is so cute. Did you look at it? It's got a cute little broom and the, the little seat is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love this. So um, make sure and grab your uh, thread kit because it looks like we're going to need 
um, purple and black and um, yellow for the broom. So a few of the um, threads from our thread kit from Oma Darlings. They have them in stock. They're shipping. I'm so thankful that they sent me one. That was very nice. So um, for our quilting today, we are going to do Hobby 2. And I think that's the one we used a couple days ago. Yeah, for the thimble flowers we used that. So we're going we're gonna to use Hobby 2. It's that cute little one with the um, needles and spools of thread on it. And we're going to use that in six by eight since our final cut size of this project is six and a half by eight and a half. That means we want a quilting design that is six by eight. So um, nice and easy, hobby two, six by eight. And I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and get started. And for those using a five by seven hoop, you're easily gonna do a double hoop. You'll do a four by six and a four by six to equal out to eight by six. Yeah, eight by six. So it's lengthwise eight, six. So uh, four by six, four by six, and you'll do fine.
make another dress form. This one will be an applique. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here continuing with Candy Corn Quilt Shop. So today we're going to make another dress form. I have a funny little story about this one. So Katrina, I don't remember her last name off the top of my head, sorry, but Katrina uh, posted when we did, I think it was block eight or nine, when we did the first dress form, she posted the wire dress form and the applique dress form and it somehow didn't occur to me <laughs> that she was working ahead. And so I was like, oh, that's so cool. How did you do it as an applique? <laughs> I thought that was funny. So obviously I figured it out shortly after, but um, now we're going to do that applique one like Katrina did. <laughs> so that's in our Kristen Creates group. If you haven't joined the Kristen Creates group, make sure and join that. We're having so much fun working on this quilt together. So today, solid dress form, and we are going to use some products for that. In fact, we've got our FlexiFoam again. So this FlexiFoam is going to be cut to two and a half by four for our solid dress form, two and a half by four. And like I said, I use my regular needles when we're using FlexiFoam, so you should be fine. Um, so for our main fabric on this one, it is the white with orange dots. In our kit, there's a couple of these. Um, there's white with gray dots, I think it is, or black, I think it's black dots. Um, so make sure and use the one that is the white with the orange dots for this. And we're gonna cut our main piece of fabric to six and a half by eight and a half. And as always, make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer, it'll help ward off puckers. So six and a half by eight and a half. And then we just have one applique piece with that flexifoam, like I mentioned. And it is the black with white dots for our applique piece. And that one we're gonna cut to two and a half by four. And I do back these with fusible stabilizer as well. As you can see on these little ones, I like to use the scraps that I have. <laughs> so two and a half by four for the black with white dots applique piece. And that same with the flexifoam, also two and a half by four. And then we are going to quilt this one. So we're gonna use our batting. And for our final cut size today is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is five by seven, at least five by seven for your batting. And then for our quilting, we're gonna use that Hobby 2 again. We're getting lots of use out of that new one. I just bought it the other day. So um, Hobby 2 in four by six since our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half we're going to use the quilting design that is four by six hobby two it's that cute one with the uh, spools of thread and needles all right and um that's it i think we're all ready so let's go ahead and get started with this fun easy applique piece one gosh we're almost done <laughs>
it's time to work on the traditional blocks for our quilt. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and today we are going to start on the traditional blocks. So the traditional blocks are the pinwheels and the flying geese. We'll do the flying geese tomorrow, but today we're going to start on the traditional blocks. So I already finished mine and I'm really happy with how they came out. And so I've got several tips for you, some tricks that I, um, that I did and I, it worked really well. I'm very, very happy with them. So a couple of things. We are going to use the white with black dot fabric and that is our pinwheel A in, in our guide. So pinwheel A is the white with black dots and then we also have the purple with green dots and the black with orange dots. So on all of them, it's three and a half by three and a half that you're gonna start with. So three and a half by three and a half on all of these three fabrics. So of the white with the black dots, you can see we need more of those. For each pinwheel, we're going to need two of the white with black dots, each pinwheel. So that means a total of six pieces of the white with black dots in three and a half by three and a half. And then for the black with orange dots, we need two of the three and a half by three and a half. And then for the two pinwheels with the purple and orange dots, I'm sorry, orange green, purple with green dots, we're going to have those also be three and a half by three and a half. And since we need them for two pinwheels, we need four of those. So four pieces of the purple with green dots and in cut size three and a half by three and a half. All right, so that's what you need today. And then I'll go over all the specifics with photos, but a couple of the tips that I wanna point out is I did back each of my fabrics with fusible stabilizer. I know traditionally you don't, and um, that's fine. I didn't do it on uh, my first quilt. I think I didn't even do it on Broomhilda. I don't remember, um, but I did do it for, um, uh, the one we just did, Vintage Boardwalk, I did not do it for Love Notes. And so what I found out is that when I don't um, back them with fusible stabilizer, they shrink, they shrink a lot. And um, that ended up being a problem for me. So what I ended up doing for Love Notes is after it was all cut out to the size that I need, after it was all completed, after the block was completed, what I did is I cut out a piece of fusible stabilizer to exactly the size that I needed. Um, for these, the final cut size is four and a half by four and a half. So I cut a piece of fusible stabilizer four and a half by four and a half and I put it on the back of the completed block. And what that did is it gave me my seam allowance because if I had, um, sewn them together with the quarter inch seam allowance with my block already being smaller, then it it wouldn't have fit right with the whole quilt, right? When we're piecing it all together, we want everything to fit right. So we really want this final block to be four and a half by four and a half. So that was my fix on Love Notes, but on Vintage Boardwalk and on this one, I went ahead and I fused the back of each piece of the fabrics and it just made it so that it doesn't shrink as much. It doesn't pull. So all of the stitching, cause we, I did quilt them. You can see the chevron on here and it just made it so that that's not pulling all of my stitches on this little fabric. Instead, it, my fabric was so well stabilized with the uh, fusible stabilizer on it that it made it so that it's not pulling, it's not shrinking. And it still made it very easy to sew all the pieces together. Um, I'll show you photos of um, the whole process, but you can see that as I sewed each of the, the little, cause you take the little blocks and you sew them all together. And it does make um, a, a hard part in the center, but that happens with regular fabric that's not fused as well. So um, either way, you're gonna have that. And you can see, I don't have like a hump or anything in the middle. 
it really they these worked out so well and i'm so happy with them so and i still have my quarter inch seam allowance and i quilted it and it's four and a half by four and a half so i didn't do the final step but it says to square your block to four and a half by four and a half mine already were four and a half by four and a half it does they don't get <laughs> bigger <laughs> what i have found in the past is they just get smaller and then they're not quite the right size that you need them to be so that's my biggest tip is i did do what works for you but i did few um stabilizer fusible mesh stabilizer on the back of each of my fabrics for for this before putting it all together um, and like i said you can do it after the fact if it turns out that your your block is a little bit smaller than it needs to be that's another fix um, so that's one thing another big thing that i did um, i'll have to show you more in pictures because my block is already together but when you are, are putting the two pieces together and then you do the two so you do all of the little pieces of four you have four all together and then you break it down to two and two and when i did that when i sewed them together i sewed them starting from the center down and then again and then take it out and then from the center up so starting from the center because what i found is that when i just do a straight line um, a straight stitch all the way down that it's moving too much even if i pin it 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 just moves too much because of that center hump it kind of makes it pulls it in it makes it want to move so what i did is starting from the center um stitch straight down and then center and i turned it over and then stitched it straight so it just made it so that there was a little bit less hump a little less bulk in the middle and also there was just no movement. So I didn't even like, I don't know if you're like me, but when you do these traditional blocks, it's pretty stressful because you're trying to line it up just right and everything. And um, I didn't have to do any of that really. I just centered it all, stitched it, and they came out pretty great. I'm pretty happy with all of them. So um, two of the blocks are gonna have chevron the black and orange and the purple and green um, both have chevron in horizontal four by four and then one of the blocks I think it was Halloween four nope Halloween three sorry Halloween three the one with the witch and the scrolls and the stars um, on one of the blocks that is the purple with green dots so you put all you do all the parts of getting all the pieces together get your final block and then you quilt it and so you're going to need batting so for your batting the final cut size on this is four and a half by four and a half so i used a piece of batting that's five by five and that works just so great i'm really happy with these very very happy with my my pinwheel blocks so um do what works for you but those are a couple little tips um as you can see i did one of the blocks the halloween three with um green thread for the quilting and also the the chevron with the purple and green dots i did in green thread from our um from our thread kit and then um on this one i did orange quilting and one other thing is that i used this little two and a half by two and a half for cutting them and that center line you'll see in the photos that i'm going to share um that center line really helped a lot to make everything centered just right and if you look at your um, pop rollers on the orange square the four and a half by four and a half there's also a little guide for your flying or not flying geese sorry for your uh, traditional blocks the pinwheel blocks and it has that center guide too so this will work really well um, for cutting out your fabrics as well when when we're centering it and clipping the dog ears and doing all of that um, so those all work really well so all i've done so far is the large pinwheels i'm going to start on the small pinwheels also um, those have a little bit different cut sizes and a little bit smaller um, but we'll go over all of that but anyway just wanted to give some tips that i found extremely helpful so let me know what works for you
think flying geese are a lot easier and more fun than pinwheels. What do you think? Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing with the Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. So today we're gonna do the flying geese. This is our last bit of all of the blocks for our quilt. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so exciting. So I have to tell you a little something funny. I made a goal, a silly goal, of not eating any candy during the work of this Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. So we started it on September 14th. Today is October 2nd, and I haven't had any candy. <laughs> If you know me, that's a big deal. I, I'm a sugar holic. I really like sugar and um, no candy. That's a hard one. So I've had some other things, but I haven't had any cookies. Um, I did have cake yesterday at my husband's birthday party. But anyway, no candy. And that's a big deal for me. So can you imagine how much I want to finish this quilt? <laughs> I want some candy. Um, C's candy has been popping up on my um, Facebook post and or on my Facebook uh, feed. And it's so funny. There are these caramel sm scotch mallow something that are for Halloween specifically. And oh my gosh, they look so good. So that's my goal. I'm going to get some candy <laughs> after I finish this quilt. So on the flying geese, um, as I've told you before, I find the pinwheels a little bit difficult. Um, these worked out really well, and I'm very happy with the results of them. But um, flying geese I really like. And you know what's funny is if you've ever done any of the machine, machine embroidery by number um, CDs, and actually these are in the vault now, by the way, you can get, I think all of them in the vault there. I think they're sold separately. I'm not totally sure. Um, but I have the CDs of them in there. So here's a, here's a completed one for this month. So, um, the machine embroidery by number, I think is a lot like the flying geese where you put down a fabric, you flip it, you trim it, you do all it. It's, it's like a little mind game. <laughs> I really enjoy it. It kind of keeps your brain fresh because you have to really um, focus on what you're doing. And, um, so one tip that I want to give you on the flying geese, we'll talk about the fabrics too, but on the flying geese, the biggest tip that I can give you is to put your fabrics in the order that you're going to use them. And then you're not sitting there going back and forth, reading your directions. I read my directions on my computer. I don't print them out. Um, although they're, they're in our book. So you have full instructions on how to do it in your book, but the easiest way is just put them in the order that you're going to use them. And then you just lay them down, flip it, trim it, do everything. And it, you'll see there's, there's a process and, and it's, um, it all goes together really well. I like doing the flying geese. So let's talk about what we're going to need. Um, so we are going to need, so I'm going to talk about for both. We need two of the flying geese blocks and um, so I'm just going to talk about all of the fabrics that we need for all of them. So um, this black spider web, we need 12 of them total, six for each block, 12 of them. And I did back each one with fusible stabilizer. You know me, I'm a big believer in that for warding off puckers. I don't want to get this far along and then have something go wrong. So I, I stabilized really well. So um, on these, it is going to be four and a half by three, four and a half by three, 12 of them for the two blocks, backed with fusible stabilizer, 12, and it's the black spider webs. And then for the other ones, they're called geese A, B, and C, and it is basically this orange doodles, the orange with white dots, the orange uh, flowers, the purple doodles. I don't know if these are what they, they're really called. I'm just kind of making up names for them, but um, the purple doodles, the purple with black bats, and then the purple flowers that's from Make Yourself at Home. So on each of these, there's one of each one. I did back them with fusible stabilizer, one of each of these six different, yeah, six different fabrics. Yep, six, sorry, <laughs> had to make sure. Um, and these are all gonna be cut to five and a half by three. So one each of these backed with fusible stabilizer and cut to size five and a half by three. 
All right, and that's it. So the um, spider webs and the six of the individual ones, and that's it for the two blocks of flying geese. And then since we're going to quilt it, we want our batting. And the final cut size of this is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want batting that's at least five by seven, two pieces, one for each um, block. So on this, like I said, from the start, we're following the Kimberbell quilting. And so one of them, the one with all the purple fabrics is going to be quilted in Halloween one and Halloween one. I think that's the spider one, pretty sure. Um, since our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half, we want our quilting design to be four by six. And like I said, that's the one with the purple. The one with the orange is um, going to be in uh, Celebration 2. Oh, that'll be really cute. I like that. Um, celebration 2, it's that banners one for like a birthday celebration. That's the way I see it anyway. So the orange one in Celebration 2, also in 4 by 6 And those are all the fabrics that we need. Um, and then, gosh, we're getting really close to Kristen getting some candy. <laughs> That's the goal, right? <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll tell you all the rest of how to do it in photos. Let's get started.
Are your blocks all done? Are you ready for the border blocks and to start piecing together your quilt? It's time. Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt. Today we are going to start on the border blocks so that we can start piecing our quilt together. We're near the end. It's very exciting. So let's talk about section one now and we're going to talk about what we need to do for section one. So we're going to start with there are a total of four border blocks that need quilting. There's really nine but we're going to put some of them together and so there's only four to quilt. So if you wanted you could uh, merge them together in your machine or in embroidery software so that they're in one hooping. It's totally up to you depending on the size of your hoop and, and what works for you. But let's go ahead and talk about what we need. So for the first one, it's actually block number 30, we're going to use the black um, bats on the gray fabric and the orange stripes. On my black uh, bats, my fabric is a little bit short because I did a little bit too large on one of them. So what I did is see this um, fusible stabilizer. I measured fusible stabilizer to exactly the size that I needed because we wanted these blocks to be two and a half by two and a half. And you can see my fabric is just a tiny bit short on two of them. One of them is fine. This one's fine. It is backed with fusible stabilizer. But what I did is I cut out a uh, fusible stabilizer in two and a half by two and a half. And then I'm going to use that as my seam allowance. So that if I, if I were to start sewing them together with um, the bits that are missing, that would make my blocks a little bit short. And then we, when we start piecing it all together, then we could have a problem. So this was my fix for uh, my fabric being just a tiny bit short. I'm going to use that is my seam allowance. So I've still got my quarter inch seam allowance and that will work fine. So you want um, this gray with black fabric or with black bats. Uh, you want each of these three of them to be two and a half by two and a half and backed with fusible stabilizer. And then the orange and white stripes, same thing, two and a half by two and a half, and you want three of them. And we're gonna go ahead and sew these all together and then quilt one quilting for all of these. So when we do this quilting, it's gonna be in size four by six since we're putting those blocks all together. So we want a four by six quilting design and we're gonna use Halloween one. That's that spider's really cute one. Um, so four by six Halloween one, and we're gonna use batting, one piece of batting. And since our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half, we want our batting to be at least five by seven. So that's all of these are block number 30. All right, and then for block number 31, this one we are gonna use that. It's the gray, black um, scrolls and the witch and the stars. So it is directional. So when you um, when you are uh, doing your quilting on it, make sure that you've got your, your fabric in the direction that you want it to be since it is directional because of that little witch. See the cute little witch? Um, so on this one, there's been some chatter in the groups about um, making this not as plain. So you have that option. Keep in mind, this is your quilt. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm trying to keep mine pretty close to exactly how Kimberwell is doing it because I'm, I'm doing the tutorials. And so I feel like I should do it the way that it's supposed to be. But you have the option of dressing this up. But I just want to warn you that if you decide to do that, if you decide to put an applique on here, because it's a large block, and so people were saying that they wanted um, to have something more on it, and that's totally fine. But make sure to look at the cover photo that shows you the completed block. And the reason I say that is because this block is going to have these little flags on it. So if you dress up your, your block with um, words or appliques or whatever, that's totally fine. But decide if you don't mind the flags covering that or if you're not going to use the flags. You know, again, your quilt, your way. You can do it however you want to do it. So that's your choice. 
Uh, so on this one, we are going to cut this to four and a half by eight and a half and back it with fusible stabilizer. And like I said, it is directional fabric. So four and a half by eight and a half for this one. And then we want our um, batting to be at least five by nine. Since it's four and a half by eight and a half, we want batting that's at least five by nine. And then for this one, we're going to use the Quilting Design Wavy 3. And it's going to be in four by eight and we're going to use the vertical one again your quilt your way do it works for you but that's the official one that kimberbell did for their quilt so we're just following along so wavy three and four by eight and then we have two more that was number 31 so number 32 is this cute little um green with black bats on it and we are going to cut this one to two and a half by two and a half back it with fusible stabilizer and then you're going to want some batting that's at least three by three for this block and we're going to quilt this one in halloween four halloween four i think that might be the candy corn one that would be really cute so halloween four in the design of two by two for this little block all right and then the last one for section one is number 33 and this one is the black spider webs black and gray spider webs and we're going to cut this one to two and a half by six and a half back it with fusible stabilizer and then you're going to want a piece of batting that is at least three by seven three by seven for your batting and for the quilting design on this one we're going to use hobby two hobby two and it's going to be in size two by six so that is all of the section one blocks for today. And after we get those all um, quilted, then we're gonna go ahead and start piecing them together so that we'll have section one complete. Very exciting.
And now it's time to start section two. So section two, we only have three blocks to do, but we're gonna actually sew them together and have it be one piece. And actually I didn't realize that before I cut out my, um, my batting, so I'll have to redo my batting. But on number one, actually it's number 34, it's the velveteen. So we're gonna want this to be uh, two and a half by two and a half and do not back this with fusible stabilizer keep it as is and there were some issues on the velveteen um the velveteen couch that we did some people used the um the iron away i don't remember if that's what it was called but basically iron away uh stabilizer and they had issues with it using it with the velveteen so i want to just point that out. You use what works for you. It does say in the directions to use um, a pressing cloth and to iron away the excess and the excess will go onto the, um, the pressing cloth of the iron away uh, stabilizer. I don't have that stabilizer and so I'm going to use a uh, water soluble stabilizer and this you just tear it off and then whatever doesn't tear off you can spritz it with a water bottle and um, to get the rest to just go away so the the iron away if you use the iron away that's recommended in the Kimberball booklet then um, it's the same thing you would rip it off rip off everything that you can get off and then any excess they say to iron it away but the people that did that for their sofa had some issues. So um, I would just rip away as much as you can maybe or use water soluble stabilizer. So that's on the velveteen. And like I mentioned, we are gonna put our three blocks together. So really you're going to probably use uh, water soluble stabilizer over the three of them or just a little bit on this one, it's up to you. So on each of these, this is number 35 now, it's the black and white stripes. And like I said in my previous um, part for the section one, my black and white stripes are a, a tiny bit too small because I cut one of them a little bit too large maybe. I'm not sure exactly what I did, but either way. Um, so I used a uh, fusible stabilizer in size two and a half by two and a half and, and cut it exactly to that size so that I can use that for my seam allowance when I sew these three blocks together. So two and a half by two and a half for the black and white stripes and then also for the green with black bats on it, two and a half by two and a half. And all of these should be backed with fusible stabilizer, not the velveteen though, just the regular fabric ones. All right, and then um, for your batting, uh, like I said, I cut mine to individual because I was just going off of the um, the cut guide and, and I didn't realize that we're gonna sew those three together. So it'd be better to get a piece of batting that's three by seven. It's up to you. You could use these individual ones if you cut those, but um, it'd be better to easier to just get a piece of batting that's three by seven. So I'm gonna do that and save these for another project. So we are going to sew the three blocks together and then we're going to quilt them and we're going to quilt them using hobby two in a two by six hobby two in two by six for those three blocks. And that's all we have for section two. <laughs> Pretty fun. All right, let's do it.
Are you ready for section three? It's time to get started. So for section three, we just have two very simple blocks to do for our border blocks. And the first one is this number 37 and it is the uh, flags. Oh my gosh, this is probably one of my favorites. Have you noticed that if you zoom in, if you look closely at these flags, they're all different Kimberbell fabrics. How cute is that? I love this one. This is so adorable. So on this one, we're going to cut this to two and a half by six and a half and make sure to back it with fusible stabilizer. And we're going to quilt this. So we're going to use some batting. So on our batting, we want it to be at least three by seven for our batting. And then, uh, when we're quilting it, we're gonna choose wavy two on this one and it's gonna be in size two by six in horizontal. So two by six for this one in horizontal in wavy two, that'll be so cute. All right, and then for number 38, it is the dark gray with uh, the black scroll bats, which is, I don't have a witch on mine for this one, for this um, specific block, but it still is directional because of the bats. So you don't want upside down bats, right? I don't know if you can see that, but there are bats on it and they would be upside down if you turn it the wrong way. So just when you're when you're using any of these directional fabrics, this is directional as well. So when you're um, using the directional fabrics, you just want to make sure that it's in your blah, in your hoop the way that you want the quilting to be. And that's all. Very easy. All right. So on this one, we're going to cut this to two and a half by four and a half. Back it with fusible stabilizer, and then we want a piece of batting that's at least three by five. Sorry, I'm getting a message. So I'm looking over. So three by five on your batting. And then for our quilting on this one, we're gonna use wavy three in vertical. Wavy three in vertical, and it's gonna be in size two by four. Lots of messages today. Um, two by four, wavy three. All right, and that's it. Those two border blocks, and then we'll put together all of the parts for this one, and we'll have section three all done.
Okay, after section four is section five, and this is another super easy one. We just have two border blocks to do. And again, we are gonna sew these together, and so you probably want to have your batting together. I didn't realize that when I was cutting. This is my first time pre-cutting an entire quilt, and I'm so glad that I did it. And I used my little bags to, um, to store it all, and, and it's been so convenient to have it already done and to keep everything clutter free. My, my uh, craft room has been so organized. But I did make that mistake of not realizing that the two of these are going to be sewn together. And so that means that you actually want a different size batting. But up to you. So let's talk about these. So number 39 is the purple doodle fabric and backed with fusible stabilizer. And we want this one cut to two and a half by two and a half. I cut mine a little bit larger. On the blocks that I could cut them a little bit larger, I did. Um, so if you did that, make sure that you cut them down to size before sewing all the pieces together. So I did it on some and not on others, so it's gonna be a little bit confusing, but like on this one, there just wasn't any extra. In fact, you can see I on the black and white stripes, on all of my black and white stripes except one, they were a little bit short, and so I used um, the fusible stabilizer as my guide of what size that the actual block should be. So two and a half by two and a half for each of these. This one looks bigger, but it will be cut down. Um, I haven't found that there's a big purpose in uh, making them larger than you need to be. And I did that just in case, but I wanna point out, if you're backing these with fusible stabilizer, especially a good fusible stabilizer, and you're just quilting them, it really does not pull. You, In my opinion, you really don't need to make them larger than than the actual the final cut size because it just does not pull as much. If you were doing heavy embroidery on it or maybe even an applique, I, maybe not, but um, for a simple quilting, you really don't need it any bigger than the actual size that you're going to use. So that's just my opinion, something that I have been finding as I'm working on this quilt. So on this, like I said, we're gonna sew these together and then we are going to quilt it. And so that means that we want to use a quilting design that is two by four and we're gonna use the horizontal in Halloween three. So two by four after these are sewn together in Halloween three for these. And like I said, it, it's easiest if you get a piece of batting that is three by five for this, or you can do these, but I'm just gonna save these for another time and get a piece of batting that's three by five because that'll be easier once these are sewn together. So just this, these two pieces that will become one, and so really we just have one border block uh, to quilt on section four, and we're all done with section four.
right, time for section five. So section five is very simple also. We just have two simple blocks to do. And so the first one is number 41 and it is that velveteen. So like I said before, if you want to use a water soluble stabilizer, you can use the iron away stabilizer that is recommended in the booklet. Um, but some people had some issues with ironing it and getting it off of the velveteen specifically. So um, try and tear away as much of it as you can. Um, do what works for you. I'm just going to use water soluble on it to do my quilting mm -hmm. and um, that should work fine. And like I said, if you um, have a water bottle, you can use that if, you, if there's any that you can't get away from your block for the extra stabilizer. So on this two and a half by two and a half, and then we want a piece of batting that's at least three by three. And for this one, we are going to quilt it using Halloween one. Oh, that's the spider. <laughs> so that will be hard to get all of the um, quilting away on that. So uh, I, would, I would definitely uh, not use that iron away personally, it's up to you, but, um, Halloween one on this little velveteen scrap. And, um, we are going to choose a quilting design that is two by two and you're batting three by three. And that is for number 41. So, for all right. And so for number 42, it's the adorable flags. And remember this is directional. So just make sure that you've got it in the direction that you want it to be. And um, we're going to cut this one to two and a half by four and a half and back it with fusible stabilizer. And we're going to quilt it. So we want our batting. This was uh, three by five for the batting, three by five. And for our quilting design on this, we're going to use wavy two in two by four in horizontal. So wavy two, horizontal, two by four, and just those two simple blocks. And we'll have section five all put together. Okay, it's the last section, section six. And we, again, two simple blocks to do today for section six. So on these, we are gonna sew them together. So right now you want them to be two and a half by two and a half. One of them is that velveteen and one of them is the purple with black bats. Don't back 
the uh, velveteen with fusible stabilizer but do back the bats and then after we um, get them all sewn together we'll quilt them so on this one I like I said I did two pieces of batting but you're not going to want that so on the quilting for this we're going to use Halloween one which is the spider webs and we're going to do it in two by four so it's like I said these two will be sewn together in two by four for the quilting and Halloween one and then we want a piece of batting that is three by five instead of the little blocks it, that it'll be easier to just save these for another um, project down the road and instead use a three by five batting piece so you do want to use some WSS uh, water soluble stabilizer on the velveteen that's what I've heard anyway I, I'm gonna look and see if I have a scrap and just see if it because generally you use this water soluble on like fleece or minky things that it's gonna the stitches will drop down into the pile and velveteen's pretty thin it I, I don't know why we really need it so I'll be curious to check that if I have some a, an extra scrap I'll see but um, at this point water soluble on top um, so you can go ahead and do it on top of both and um, that's it that's section six and then we will start piecing together section six and then all of the sections together and then it'll be time to start working on the borders the inner and outer borders so we are we're really getting there let's do section six
Did you finish putting all of your blocks together for your quilt? Do you know what comes next then? Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are continuing very close to finishing our candy corn quilt shop quilt. So did you get all of your blocks put together for your quilt? Oh my gosh, this is such a fun quilt. So once you have all of your blocks completed and put together, then the next step is the inner and outer borders. So we are going to use the inner and outer border fabric. Let's start with the inner. So you're going to use this orange cauldron fabric and it comes in your kit like this, a big long strip with a fabric. And we're going to cut four strips that are one and a half inches wide and during the, for the length of the fabric. So, you know what, let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that was easy. Once you have your four strips that measure one and a half inches wide by the length of the, uh, with the fabric, then you're all ready. So, I backed each one with Fusible Stabilizer. I'm using the new Kimberbell um, Fusible Stabilizer and it was great to work with. So. Um, back it with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers and to make it nice and crisp and then once you've got your four pieces you're going to want to measure your quilt so you take your tape measure and measure the length of your quilt from the top to the bottom as accurately as you can and write down your measurement each one will be a little bit different it's all based on um, how close you sew your little blocks together and everything. So make sure I write down your measurement. Mine was 30.5 exactly um, for the length. So once you have the length, then you're going to um, choose your quilting design. We're going to use Halloween 2 for our quilting design and it comes in uh, lots of border sizes. So like 1x7, 1x10, 1x12, 1x14. I think that's all of them. I don't remember. And then there's like 2 and 5 and whatever for the outer borders. But for the inner borders, we're going to use the 1 by whatever length length of your quilt so and based on your hoop size so if you, here's a for instance since mine measures 30 inches because you take off that half inch because that's your seam allowance so if mine measures 30 inches it would be pretty obvious to do three hoopings of 10 inches so one by 10. so keep in mind though that the 10 inch border is not actually 10 inches long. If you pull it up in your um, embroidery machine or embroidery software, it actually measures 9.45. So if you add up 9.45 times three hoopings, it comes out to 28.35. So you're gonna have almost two inches um, of your border that won't be quilted. And that's totally fine, that's up to you. The other option is you can do one hooping of the one by 12, because the 12 inches doesn't actually measure 12 inches, it is 11.73. So if you did one hooping of the one by 12 and two hoopings of the one by 10, then you would it would equal out to 30.63. So it'd be a little bit too long and that's fine too. So what you would do is you would cut your batting so that it wouldn't go into the, the seams. So you would do on your last hooping, you'd measure how much you actually need left and just cut your batting and let the rest just run off. It doesn't matter. It would run off onto your, um, your border. And that's totally fine. So it's up to you. I haven't decided which way I'm going to do yet. I think I'm probably going to just do the three hoopings of one by 10 and um, see how that comes out. You'll know when you get to your last hooping and I'll add all that information in the tutorial as I work along. But um, you have you decide from the start and really you can decide at the end. So that's actually a good option. If you were to do um, the 10 
inch hoopings twice and then measure on the last one, you might find out that you had them close enough together that the one by 12 is a good option for you. If you've got a little bit of space in between, which is totally fine, if you have a little bit of space between each of the hoopings, then the one by 10 is probably the best option for you. And if you have even more space, you have the one by seven or you can do the one by 10 and let it run off or you know whatever is going to work for you but you have options here so based on your quilt size based on your hoop size and based on how close you get them together um, you can decide on that last hooping exactly which one will work for you and i'll go over all of that in photos so let's go ahead and get started and your border time <laughs> One more quick thing. So I just bought the Halloween 2 border and I want to point out two things. Um, one is there's a Halloween 2 regular design and then there's the Halloween 2 border. So you want to make sure to get the border because the Halloween 2 design doesn't come in one inches that it's just the border. So you want to get that Halloween 2 border. I think the ending number was 062 if I recall. Um, and so one other thing that I think you'll like is that I just bought it on the Kimberbell website using our affiliate link with Oma Darlings. And don't forget to do that, please. And um, there's a download link now. So remember that was missing for a little while. It's there. At least it was there for me. So I... I bought it, I put it in my cart, finished off my order, and then right away the, the website came up with, here's your download link, click on that, and it downloaded right away. And if you don't see that, like I said before, you can always get it in your email, because in the email there's a download link as well. But I thought that was pretty cool that it uh, works now. So easy to buy, um, try to use your affiliate link, please. I will add information on that. Um, and let's get going with this inner border.
So I'm using the new Kimberbell Fusible Stabilizer and we'll see how this works out. I'm pretty excited to try out the new Kimberbell Stabilizers. It's this light green one. It says Fusible Backing Sewing and Embroidery Stabilizer. <laughs> And did you know that you can use your discount code Kristen Creates on all of your stabilizers at Oma Darlings because they are sponsoring this project for us throughout the length of this project. They are offering that discount code Kristen Creates for 10% off stabilizers, everything you can think of for this project. Get it at Oma Darlings during this time. Well, what do you think? Are you ready to make use of all of these? Let's do it. Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing with our candy corn quilt chop, which actually we're almost near the end. So today it's time to make use of our outer borders. So there's a couple really important things here. So when I looked in the directions in the booklet it says um that there are four strips total two of them are one size and two of them are another size i just assume they'd all be the same size and they're not at least if you bought the kit i don't know if you bought um the individuals if it's different but if you bought the kit they're already pre-cut and it does say that you'll need to trim them up but i measured mine and they're right so um they are four and a half inches wide, which is what they're supposed to be. So if you notice, the witches are directional, just like our other fabric that was black on black. This one is black with multicolors and the witches are directional. So be really careful when you're deciding um, to start lengthwise, widthwise. It says in the directions to start on the sides on the lengthwise so you're going to start by measuring your quilt just like we did for the inner borders measure and get your exact size of your quilt mine is 32 and a half inches wide and 32 and a half inches long right now with the inner borders on so um, I'm going to do what it says in the booklet and to start on the side so what I did is I checked to make sure so two of these are um, long with the fabric and then two of them, this is one of the shorter ones, I think. Um, so yeah, so two of them are 33 and a half inches long, at least in my kit, 33 and a half inches long. So obviously those are the ones that are going to be starting first, because once you do the first, then you're going to measure again and do the, the um, other. For me, it's going to be the top and the bottom are second, and those are for the longer strips. For the shorter strips, they're going to be my sides. Hopefully they're all the same, but I don't know. So I'm just giving you this information just in case. So the ones that are 33 and a half inches long are going to be the sides. And for me, that works out perfectly because then my witches are facing the right direction. Obviously, you just want to check your fabric and make sure to use the two that are for the sides. Because if I did it this way and did it on the top, then I've got some sideways witches flying very funny. <laughs> so just be careful and check your two fabrics. Two of them are longer, two of them are shorter, and you want to start with the one that is the shorter. And for me, it's the sides, and that's the direction that my witches are going. They're probably all the same, but again, I'm just giving you all the information just in case. So we are going to quilt these. So what I figured out is since mine is 32 and a half inches um, length, I'm going to start with my side borders. And if I do two, remember I told you yesterday that um, for the for the borders, if if it says it's a two by twelve design, sorry, um, if it says that it's a one by 12 design, which is what we did yesterday, it turned out that that 12 inch design wasn't actually 12 inches. So it's the same thing today. 
we're gonna use the four by 12 or 10 or seven, whatever size hoop works for you and for your um, quilting. I'm going to use the 12 inch and the four by 12. So the four by 12 isn't really four by 12, it's actually four and a half by 11.75. So when I add up 11.75 twice, then I get 23.5. And then if I add a 10 inch to do the four by 10, then I'll add 9.45. So 11.75, if I do two of those and one of the 9.45, that equals up to 32.95. And since my quilt is 32 and a half inches long, I want a quilting design that's gonna be as close to 32 as I can get it. Not 32.5, but 32, because that extra 0.5 is our seam allowance for each of the sides to sew a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna do the two uh, four by 12 and the one uh, four by 10, and that will equal up, equal up to 32.95. And so like I did on the inner borders yesterday, I'm just gonna let a little bit run off and I'm gonna cut my batting on the last step. So I'm gonna do those first two quilting designs on my borders and then I'm going to measure them and see exactly how how much more quilting I need just like we did yesterday so I expect it'll be about an inch that I will let it run off onto um, my stabilizer so we'll go over all of that in pictures but I just want to make sure that you knew that um, to check your fabric direction and also what size that you need for your quilting design. And like I said, I'm gonna use two of the four by 12 and one of the four by 10. So those of you that have a Luminaire, what's the other one, um, Solaris? I think is the other one. I'm not absolutely sure. The baby lock version and the brother version that have the big, big hoop. I think it's 10 by 16 or something about that. Um, you could do two of these in one um, hooping if you choose. You saw that I did do two together in my hoop um, for the inner borders, for those thin little one inch borders. I can't do it on these because I don't have one of those big machines, but those of you that have the big machine, you can merge two together. So I will actually um, add information on how to do that because I had someone ask this morning. Um, we've had a lot of designs where we did things together and I showed you on Sew It Pro how to do that. Um, and so it's the same step, but I did have someone ask, so I'm gonna show you. It'll just take a few minutes to show you how to do that if you choose to do that. Um, it will be tight. That's one thing is if this is four and a half inches each, so you're, it'll fill your hoop. So, but actually you're not going to have extra fabric because this is already cut to size. So, um, you should be totally fine. You'll want to watch it, of course, babysit it a little bit, but that's our order board, outer border. So we are going to use Halloween two and it's not the regular Halloween two. It's the Halloween two border. Like we discussed yesterday, it has spider webs and spools on it and it's really cute. So that'll be fun. Um, and then, like I said, you want to use the design that's going to fit whatever hoop that you have. So um, if your quilt design is the same size as me and you've got the dream machine like I do, then you can just follow along and do um, two of the four by 12 and one of the four by 10 like I'm going to. Um, if not, you can figure out it, it won't be hard. Um, I think I'm going to use orange, the lighter orange quilting. It's spider webs, and this has already got some color to it and design, so you could use um, black or light gray or a, a fun color like orange like I'm going to. I want it to stand out a little bit. So anyway, um, the other thing is you want to make sure to back this these with a uh, fusible stabilizer. I'm using the Kimberbell uh, fusible backing that I just received from Oma Darlings and it worked like a charm yesterday. It, it's a really good stabilizer so I highly recommend that if you have it. Um, I am going to continue using Tearaway in my hoop. Um, it is recommended to use the um, mesh stabilizer in your hoop. It'll make for a softer quilt and it's probably a little less bulky. Um, but since I started with Tearaway, I'm going to keep with Tearaway so that my quilt is the same throughout. Um, but that the softer 
uh, fusible, not fusible, sorry, the mesh cutaway would be a good option for you if you have that. And that's it. We are going to do the outer borders and then we are whew, very close to the end. So in case you're wondering after that, we are going to do stitch in the ditch. We'll add our backing fabric and we'll go over all the question and answers on that. I know a lot of people already have questions for that. So we're, we're almost there. So hold on. <laughs> Let's get going with our outer borders. Hey everyone. So I am going to do a very quick tutorial on how to do two borders together in one hoop if you choose. This will only work if you have the Luminaire or the Solaris, I think it is the brother or baby lock version of the one with the big, big hoop. So there might be other manufacturers now that I think about it, but um, you would need at least a 10 by whatever hoop, a 10 inch wide hoop. So I know that the uh, Luminaire has a 10 by 16, so this would work for you. So I had someone ask in our group today, so I thought I'd do a real quick tutorial. So I am sharing my screen. I am using Sew Up Pro, which you can see up here in the title bar. Um, and you would just go to file open and open up the design that you're going to use. So the first one I'm going to use is the four by 12. So you would go ahead and open that. And up here where it looks like a little hoop, you're going to choose your hoop size. So I'm going to pretend that I have that nice big hoop and 10 by 16 luminaire. Okay, so if you hit the shift button on your keyboard and scroll down with your mouse or up, um, that makes it so that you can uh, make the screen larger or smaller to fit um, where you want to be able to see. So you would take your first um, border block and move it over. You're going to have to do it pretty far. Well, because no, we should be okay actually with the big hoop. So, all right, so that's the first one. Now we're going to go to file merge. So, notice that I kept it on the center line here. That's helpful if you do that. So, file merge and bring in the same thing again four by 12, open, and it is going to go up here. We just move it out of the way. And again, try and keep these center guides on the center line. So you can see these are the center guides and then here's our center line both horizontally and vertically so boom there you have two of them so the gal that asked in our group today jackie she was saying that she's able to get both of them into her hoop but it does each of them separately and that's true that's what will happen if you have it like this so you have the first hooping which is steps one through five. And then the second, I'm sorry, it's still in the same hoop, but it's the first part and the second part. So the second part would be steps six through 10. So it's easy to merge them and move the, the steps around. I don't know if you can do it on your machine or not, but you can do it on software very easily. So like I said, one through five is the first hooping. And you can tell from the colors. So the first one is always the placement of the batting. Second one is tack down of the batting. Third is placement of the main fabric. Fourth is tack down or basting stitch of the main fabric. And number five is your quilting design. So you can see they're color coordinated. So we know that one through five is the first uh, border block. So, or border, border, outer border. <laughs> so number six is the placement of the first the second um, design. So you would take number six, and what I do is I hit my shift key and move using my mouse button, I move it up to number two. So you can see they're together. So both of these are number one and number two are the placement of batting um, for the two different designs. And we're just gonna keep doing that. It's always after this teal color. So this one here, shift key, move your mouse up, and bring it down to now you have number three and number four are your tack down of your batting. So again, after this teal, this one is going to be the placement of our main fabric. So we bring it up here. Oops, I'm sorry, down. <laughs> so it, you're just going to bring it down to the first one that doesn't have a double. So you see one and two are already done, three and four are already done. So five, we're going to bring this down to be number six now. So seven is the first yellow, nine is another yellow. These are both the basting stitch for our main fabric. 
So we bring those up together. Now everything is together and you can keep it like this easily. That works just fine. Um, but then it's a lot of hitting your, your machine, go, go, go. And so it's easy, in my opinion, to just edit and join them all together. So you would go up here to the title bar to edit, join threads, and it comes up to join all adjacent threads of the same color. And you say, okay, and instead of 10 steps, now we have five. So all of, all of the placement for your batting is together and that you would do on your stabilizer. And then number two is your tack down of your batting. And now you would trim both of them together. So you don't have to take your hoop on and off twice. You're doing it all once. And then the placement for your main fabric. And number four is the basting of your main fabric. And as you saw in yesterday's tutorial, I bypassed those because our fabric is already cut to the size that we want. And so there's really not enough room for it to catch the fabric and it could end up moving your fabric. So I don't use number four on these. If I have a block where I have two, inch, two inches of extra fabric, then by all means use that basting stitch. It's a really great way to not get um, my dogs are going to come running in now because they just got back from the walk. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so number four is that basting stitch, and and I bypass it if I'm using the fabric that's already pre-cut. It's up to you. Um, and then number five is your quilting design, and it's going to do both of them together. And if you wanted to um, do different colors or anything like that, you would just hit your pause button and and stop it to before you start the next part. But this is all just how to uh, join them together. Super easy to do. Hope that helps. Okay, so just like we did yesterday, when we have our first uh, strip done of the uh, quilting and we've got our second hooping, 
ready for the second strip, the second bit of quilting. Then we're going to line it up. Let's see if we can do this here without too much shaking. All right, so we've got the first one, and we're just going to fold it back to see the batting of the first hooping, and we're going to line it up with the batting of the second hooping. Let's see if we can push this down a little. All right, so here's the the line of the the top of the second hooping. So we're going to just line up the first hooping batting with the second hooping. And once we've got it all lined up just from the batting, it's super easy. Then we just fold it back, line it up with that placement stitch that's on each side, and we're going to tape it in place. That's all. Nice and easy. Make sure it's straight, lined up. Those placement stitches are super helpful. And then I just tape the top and the bottom of it. If you're super nervous, you could also tape the sides because the quilting is really going to go on the center. You can see it really doesn't go to the edge, but you could tape this, but I just watch it a little bit and it's, it's all fine. So we're ready for the second hooping. Okay guys, so once that you have your side borders done, don't forget when you sew them on, check your witch to make sure that the orientation of your fabric is right. If you've used colorful thread like I did, you probably won't even see the witch, but if you look closely, you'll see it and make sure that your witch is straight up when you sew your two sides on. So you don't want a witch that's upside down. All right, and then Next, it's going to be the top and the bottom borders. So for those, we have to do a little math again. So um, measure your quilt. Start by measuring your quilt. Mine measured 40.5, just a tad under 40.5. Um, so I want a quilting design that's going to equal out to 40 inches. So here's what I figured out. So if you do um, three hoopings of a 14 inch uh, design which is really 13.98 then it equals out to 41.94 so that's the one I'm going to go for and I also realized that you can double you can put two which I've shown you how to do um, earlier 
you can do two if you don't have a luminaire. If you've got a dream machine that has a 14 inch hoop, you can do the two side by side. And so I'm going to do that. I haven't done it yet. I, I did create the file and I've got it in my machine ready. So um, fingers crossed it'll work. It's a super tight fit. So you have to really, really, really watch the um the stitch out to make sure that it actually doesn't overlap or move or anything you don't you want to make sure and be really careful with that but so back to the sizing so depending like i said before it depends on the size of your quilt and it depends on the size of your hoop so i have the 14 inch hoop so and it's nine and a half by 14 that's why i'm able to just barely fit in uh my the two of the four and a half four and a half so it, it fits but it'll be really tight um, so if you have a 14 inch hoop you could do three hoopings of um, of the 14 inch and it'll come out to 41.94 and so that means it'll be almost two inches too large maybe even right about two inches too large and um, I'll just have it run off onto the stabilizer on the last hooping. So the first two will be the full 14 inch. And then after that is when you want to measure again to see exactly how much you need because you want to cut your batting if, if you don't have the full amount. Like I, I, I won't want the full 42 inches of uh, design. And so I'm going to cut my batting and just let it run off. So I did that on... Um, the first two sides and it worked perfectly. So that's what I'm going to do. If you have a 10 inch hoop, a six by 10 hoop, then you can do four of the 10 inch, which isn't really, it's 9.45. So four of those will equal out to 37.8. So that's close enough. It's up to you. Um, you can go with that and just have a little bit of space in between or a little bit of space at the end. Nobody is going to see you do what works for you. Um, or you can do a little bit more. If you have the, a 12 inch hoop, like an eight by 12 hoop, you can do three hoopings that would total 35.19. I think that's a little bit short for the, the quilting. If I were you and you're going to do a 12 inch, then I would add in a seven inch. Cause if you do, um, the 35.19 plus the seven inch, which is pretty close to seven inches, um, then you're going to come out with 42.16. So again, you would just let it run off of the, the stabilizer, run onto the stabilizer after your fabric because we're going to trim off that end anyway. doesn't matter. Um, so let's see what else. You could do two of the 12 and two of the 10. That would equal out to 42.36. You can do six. If you have a five by seven hoop, you can do six of the seven inch um, designs and that will come out to 41.82 so again not run off the end so there's some options for you again you just have to figure out what will work for you I'll add all this information onto the tutorial so that you can um, come back to this and decide which size is going to work for you this is for the top and the bottom and then our quilt top will be done all right let's get started with the top and bottom of our outer borders
It's time to use lots of pins. Are you ready? <laughs> Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Song here. It is the perfect day to continue working on our candy corn quilt shop quilt. It is 21 mile an hour winds here today with 45 mile an hour gusts. So yeah, the perfect day to be inside, not on your bike. So today we are going to do the stitch in the ditch and the binding. So we'll start with, with the stitch in the ditch and you're going to add your backing fabric. So in the directions, it'll tell you that you want a yard and a half of the backing fabric. Mine is the cute um, houses and, and the quilt shop. And oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love this. Thank you, Oma Darlings. They sent this to me. And if you didn't order your backing fabric, uh, give Oma Darlings a call or go on their website. They can rush it to you. The backing fabric, like I said at the very beginning, is not included in your fabric kit. It is a separate purchase. But Oma Darlings has them in stock and ready to go out to you if you didn't already get it. So today we are going to do stitch in the ditch, which means that we're going to need a lot of pins. <laughs> so as you can see on my quilt, I have pins. I have pins on all, in all of the blocks. So I like to do that um, for a few reasons. One is it keeps it all together because you don't want a bunch of uh, movement at all on your quilt. And so having the pins really helps with that. But it also gives you um, a very quick visual of what blocks you've done and what blocks are still to do. So that's my biggest tip is um, pin every single block. So all of them that are, are together, they're all pinned, each block. And we're going to stitch in the ditch around each block. So on that, the biggest question that I get asked is, do I add another layer of batting? I don't. It's a personal choice. You can definitely add another layer of batting. If you have a machine that's got a big wide throat and you're strong and you like moving it all the way through, great do it um i prefer not to add another layer of batting mine goes on the wall it is all my quilts are wall hangings all these decorative quilts are wall hangings so there isn't a purpose to having an extra layer of batting if you're going to use your quilt at, to snuggle up against the fire and and keep warm at go ahead add another layer of batting um totally preference for whatever works for you all right, so that's the biggest thing. I don't add batting. You're welcome to use, add another layer of batting if you choose. Um, so the other thing is we're gonna use invisible thread. So there are several invisible threads on the market. Um, I like the Guterman one. There's, I like the Sulky one also, there's several. And I will add links in the video description um, of different uh, invisible threads that I've used. I, there's some that are basically fishing wire and I don't really prefer those. So um, I, I had one that was just this big spool. It came like monster spool. I haven't used any of that. I didn't realize that it was so big when I bought it. But these, these are very um, easy to use. I know this one is Guterman, if I recall. Oh, this one is Sulky, sorry, Sulky. And then uh, this one's Guterman, so you can see from the blue tape that I've been using this one. Um, but I've used both, and they're both great in my opinion. So one thing that when you use invisible thread, um, the metallic thread, any specialty threads, you don't want to use your um, auto threader. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> my machine shop told me, oh, you don't want to do that. And it's funny because I did it for a couple of years, no problems. And then with my new machine, the dream machine, I used it one time and it broke. It stopped working. And so I had to bring it to the shop and I didn't know what I did wrong. And I was all scared because it was my new big expensive machine that I haven't even finished paying off. And um, it wasn't working. And it was an easy fix for them, but the clue that they gave me is you're not supposed to use your auto threader when you use specialty threads like this. And so you would just thread it yourself, get, get your reading glasses <laughs> and, and thread it yourself. And, and then it works fine. 
Another thing with these and the metallic thread, if you use a, um, a thread stand, I put mine behind my machine and I only use it when I use um, specialty threads. It gives it more time to unravel and to not get all um, clingy and, and um, knotted and such. So I use a thread machine, a thread um, stand behind my machine for these type of threads and that helps too. So a couple more things. Um, you want good pins. I made the mistake on my first stitch in the ditch quilt. I bought these really cute colored pins um, that I just thought were fun and I ended up having to throw them away. They were useless. They weren't sharp enough to get through the quilt. Um, they were really hard to work with and just a super pain. So I ended up throwing them away. Um, I think I think these are grits. I don't remember exactly, but I will put a link in the video description. You can see they're angled. They're they're specific for um, quilting, and they're really sharp and they're really easy to use. Super easy with that that angle on there, and they come in several sizes. So I bought a bunch of these. And I, like I said, I use one for every single block. And then I also have the smaller size also angled and I use those for the inner borders or the little two and a half inch um, blocks. So you want a variety, but you want good pins. Invest in some good pins that'll make your life a little easier. And then someone asked me about needles. I use the same needle. I literally use my regular needles for quilting and embroidery and um, felt and minky and leather. I, I use them for everything. And they're, they're probably not the regular needles, I guess. I've shared a photo of them on our group site and um, there's a link on every video that has where I get them. Um, I buy them from my local shop. You can get them at your local shop. I have tried to buy them on Amazon before and I will never do that again. They arrived uh, bent and rusty and not good. So the thing with these is they are 7511 regular needles, but they're PD. So I think that's perfect, perfect durability, if I recall. Um, they're stronger. And the way that you can tell, obviously that PD, but also when you open up the package, they are gold, so they're like titanium coated or something like that, but they're, they're just really good needles, and my machine loves them. Both machines, I've had two brother machines, um, actually three, I've had three different brother machines over the years, and my machines love them and really are, can be very picky about which needles they like, and all three of mine have loved these. So there's a link in the video description of the ones that I buy and I use them for everything. So in my opinion, you don't need a specific needle for stitching in the ditch, but um, I guess it depends on your needles. I've been lucky with these. They work great. So another thing is your bobbin. So I am not one to um, change my bobbin if I don't have to. I I, I don't know why I don't like making the bobbins. Um, it's easy on my new machine, so I shouldn't have a problem with it. But um, since our backing fabric, depending on what you're going to use, but my backing fabric is black and with a lot of color. So I could easily use my regular white bobbins and that would be fine. And on all my previous quilts, I've done white, even on my Broomhilda, which was very purple, a purple background. I did white uh, bobbin. Never thought anything of it. It hangs on a wall. Who cares? So it's up to you. But I think I am going to use a black bobbin for the first time. Just learning something new, doing doing different things. So um, there's this bobbin case that you can get on Amazon and make your bobbins and then have them so that you've got them ready for next time. You can see I don't do many bobbins. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use your regular white one. You can do some black ones, uh, whatever works for you. Um, but that's easy. So, um, the thing that you want to do, like I said, you're going to want a yard and a half of your background fabric or your backing, backing fabric. And, um, I like to do about two inches. Sorry, I'm moving the camera. I like to do about two inches on each of the sides. 
just in case it pulls or anything, which it's really not going to because of the uh, pins, but you'll trim it up at the end. So it's not, it doesn't matter, but you don't want it too short, obviously. Um, I don't use fusible stabilizer on this. Gosh, that would be expensive, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to. Um, but I haven't found a need. I'm just um, doing stitching around each box. So or around each block. So I don't think that that's necessary, but do what works for you. Um, and then we'll do the binding and Binding is not my favorite. I'll tell you right now, binding is not my favorite. I am uh, still somewhat new to the sewing aspect and um, it's not my favorite, but I've done it on all of them now. And I'm looking around at the ones hanging on my wall and, and they've all come out fine. So I've gotten really good at mitered corners. I did my mitered corners on Broomhilda and I was super proud of them. And oh my gosh, on, um, Vintage Boardwalk. I was like jumping for joy. They, they came out so good. So I'll show you the tips and tricks that I have, but um, not an expert on, on binding by any means. A lot of people like to bind um, by hand. Not me. You will not see me doing that. I did it, I think, once on a little, what are those called? The, the Little Pillows by Camberbell. Um, the monthly little pillows. I did it on one of those won't do it again. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. It really didn't look good. It's just not my thing. So um, if you have a specific way of doing your binding, go for it, do it. Um, but I'll show you my way and um, you do what works for you. <laughs> so anyway, my mine came out great on, um, on Vintage Boardwalk. So I was really happy with it. And so I'll give you my little tips and tricks on that. Um, and that's it. So we're going to go ahead and start with our stitch in the ditch. Oh my gosh, we're so close. So we have stitch in the ditch and binding and then embellishments and we're done. And I don't know if you saw that video, uh, uh, a few days ago, I posted a video saying that I haven't had any candy <laughs> during this entire process. So from September 14th, when we started this quilt, I made a goal of not having any candy and I can't wait to have a piece of candy when I'm done with this quilt. I've already picked it out. I'm getting a, a scotch mallow from C's Candies. And so I, I'm pretty excited to be finishing up this quilt. <laughs> candy. All right. So anyway, let's get started. One other thing I forgot to say is you want to start when you're doing your stitch in the ditch, start from the middle, which I think is probably this Here Lies Empty Bobbins. So start from the middle, go around each square stitching, and then continue on and all the way out. But start from the middle and work your way out. That will help to not get the fabric moving on the back. And I use my Move It, um, what's it called? The Move It Foot, the Move It Foot. Oh my gosh, that thing is great. It, um, and I'll, I'll share a couple tips about that one as well in, in photos, but when I first put my move it on my new dream machine, it didn't work. And no matter what I did, it didn't work. And it was making me insane. And it was during COVID. And so I couldn't go to the shop and get a tutorial on it. Um, so I watched every video I could find and everything I did, it didn't work. And it turns out, in fact, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> Sorry. Turns out that there is this little piece that nobody tells you, <laughs> but on some machines, you need this piece for the move it foot to work and you just screw it in and I'll show you. It's super easy, but if you haven't used your move it foot or you're afraid of your move it foot, give it a try and see if you need this piece. If you do make sure you include it because mine would not work without it. So uh, that's it. Let's go. <laughs>
for your binding fabric, it's the black and white stripes. You need a third of a yard of the fabric and we're supposed to cut them into five, two and a quarter inch strips. I prefer two and a half. So if I have enough, I'm going to do two and a half. I haven't cut mine yet, obviously, so I don't know if I'll have enough. But if I do have enough, I personally prefer two and a half inch. Um, if you prefer it really tight um, for a nice like crisp edge, then you want two and a quarter. If you want a little bit of wiggle room, because I like to work from the back. You start with the back forward when you're when you're doing the embroidery version of um, uh, the binding. It's, some people do it by hand and I think they do it differently, but for the if you're doing it um, on the machine, then you start on the back and then you pull it forward and you can do a pretty decorative stitch on the top, which I generally do, and we'll go over more of that. But um, so for that purpose, I like it to have a little bit extra room, a little bit extra wiggle room for me, but totally your choice, um, two and a quarter versus two and a half. Either way, you need five strips um, in the width of fabric. So anyway, let's get started.
Well, what do you think? Should we work on some embellishments now for our quilt? Hey Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and we are on the last step of our candy corn quilt shop quilt. Wow, <laughs> I'm very excited. All right, so we are gonna do the embellishments today and there are several and I'm gonna go through each one step by step. And did you see the buttons? Oh my gosh. I, I didn't know what these are, the little green things. They are the witch's hands. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. All of these are just so cute. This is going to be so fun. So our first embellishment is the leather sign that goes on the quilt shop. So one thing also I want to point out, several people already did their embellishments. They got really excited to do the embellishments, so they did them early and before doing the backing. And that's fine, your quilt, do it your way. Just I wanna point out to be really careful when you're stitching in the ditch to not hit any of those buttons or the leather, the, the banner goes pretty close to the sides. Just be super careful, that's all. Um, I am loving seeing all of these come together, it's so fun. So on the first one is that um, the sign. So the sign for the, the quilt shop. And we are gonna use our leather the white leather that's in your embellishment kit and the size is supposed to be seven and a half by four and a half you need at least seven and a half by four and a half the one that comes in the embellishment kit is generous it's eight by five so you're all set um and we are going to put that in our hoop and um use the black and the lighter orange for the sign words so it says to use wash away stabilizer on the top. So I'm gonna use mine for the first time. This is from Oma Darlings. And it says to um, cut the stabilizer in the hoop wash away. It said something about, oh yeah, 20 seconds. Soak the sign for 20 seconds after. I think we probably will be able to just rip it all away. That's my plan anyway. We'll see how that works out. But if not, it says to soak it for 20 seconds in cool water to dissolve. Um, lay flat to dry. You probably could even just squirt it and it'll go away. Um, Susan Weege had a good suggestion. I think it was Susan. Um, yeah, she used a Q-tip with a, a wet Q-tip to get the extra. That was for the iron away topper, but it's probably the same. But I haven't used this before, so this is my first time. And so I'll give some tips and tricks if I find any along the way. So let's go ahead and get started with our dimensional banner. That's our first embellishment. Here we go. Okay, everyone, now that we've finished our banner, 
Now we're gonna work on the second embellishment. Did you know there's six? There's a total of six sets of embellishments and we finished the first one, so we're gonna start on number two. So it is called the pennant banner and we're gonna use the gold vinyl that's in our embellishment kit. We need it to be seven and a half by two and a half, at least seven and a half by two and a half. The sheet that comes in the embellishment kit is a little bit larger, so that's nice that they gave us a little extra. I think mine was a little bit more than eight by three, so that's nice. So if you look in your booklet, there is a template. It's just this tiny little template here, and you want to use that to um, have it as your guide for when you're cutting out the banner pieces. So what I started with was cardstock. I thought cardstock would be really great um, to have it be a little bit thicker, but I couldn't see the template through it. So that didn't work. So I just used a regular piece of paper. I cut out my template and you just put it over the, the booklet and um, maybe shine a light on it and draw that little template onto your paper. And then once you have it on your paper, it will look like this tiny little template piece. And then we're going to use that to cut out of the gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an outline on all of them. We need five of the pennant banner pieces and then I'll cut. So rather than trying to hold it in place, I'm just going to hold it and draw around it and then cut. And then the other thing that we need is our twine. So the twine comes in the embellishment kit as well. And um, we will use that to make the the banner holder, the little string holder, and then also for the little bows on the ends. And so that's our second embellishment. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I cut out all of my little banner pieces. Actually, I didn't cut them out, I drew them. Um, but I wanted to show you a little tip. So I, on the back of my gold, I went ahead and drew the each of the little banner pieces. And look at, I drew them on one side, so I get all this extra <laughs> gold leather for another project. So, but I found it easier to, to draw on this side instead of on the gold side. And now I'll just be able to cut those out and nice and easy. And let's go ahead and do it. Okay, we have number two done of our embellishments. So we are gonna move on to the third set. The third set are those super cute mini quilts that the witches are gonna hold. So in your embellishment kit, there is a little fabric panel, a small little fabric panel that has the three, uh, the little quilts, two quilts and one bench pillow. You're gonna cut those. You can see I've already cut mine and they are going to be right on the edge of the quilt. So right on the very edge, you're gonna cut that. And I did first back mine, I backed the entire fabric strip with fusible stabilizer because we're gonna quilt them. So ward off puckers, right? So after you add your fusible stabilizer, I used the Kimberbell, uh, the light green one, that's the fusible backing, I used that. Um, and then after that, you trim it to exactly right on the edge of each of the quilts and bench pillow. 
and then you're going to get your backing fabric for each of them so it's the cute little uh, gray wavy lines two of them are three and a half by three and a half and then one is three and a half by two for that bench pillow i didn't back these with fusible stabilizer um you could but i don't really think it's needed We'll see at this point. <laughs> so uh, we are going to quilt them. I haven't decided yet how I'm gonna quilt them. I'm gonna look at a few different options and I'll go over that um, in photos. But for now, gather your supplies and we are gonna do the dimensional mini quilts. All right, let's get started. Hey Kimberbell friends, so I decided what I'm going to do on my mini quilts. So keep in mind that you can use your sewing machine and do straight lines, diagonal lines, something very simple. Um, the blocks are very little, you can make it really simple. Or if you want, you can uh, challenge yourself a little bit and do something a little different. So what I've decided I'm going to do is Halloween 2 on this uh, little block and I've shrunk it down. I'm using the four by four version, but I shrunk it down to three by three. And um, you can do that using the buttons on your machine. When you load it up, you just shrink it down. I've shown how to do that in several videos. Um, or you can use embroidery software. That's what I did. It's just easier and quicker in my opinion. So Halloween two in four by four shrunk down to three by three. And then for this one, I'm using Halloween 4, which is that cute uh, candy corn one. So the candy corn in 4x4 four four also shrunk down to 3x3. Three three. And then for the adorable Boulevard pillow, I have chosen Halloween 1 borders in two what is it two by seven and then i'm just going to let the edge run off so i decided that the the ending of the design is cuter for this um, and so i'm going to put this on the back end of the two by seven and then like i said just let it run off of the side and um, just make sure that you have your batting the right size and it'll be fine to let it just run off so on the batting for this i've I'm cutting mine to two by three because that's the final cut size that we're going to want on the length. The two inch will still be trimmed because we want it to be one and a half. The, the cut size of this fabric, if you recall, was uh, two by three and a half. So I'm cutting my batting to two by three. That'll give me my seam allowance. And then after it does the batting placement line, I'll trim off the top end so that it'll end up being about one and a half by three. So um, lots of information, but again, you can do it really simple or you can do it a little bit more advanced. It's totally up to you. On the batting for these two pieces, you're gonna wanna cut your batting to, what was it, three by three, because our overall cut size or our overall start size of this is three and a half by three and a half. So three by three will give us our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. All right, and then I already gave you the cut sizes for the backing, and um, again, your choice. You can do this um, a little bit more intricate or do it really simple. It's not gonna matter one way or the other. It's your quilt, make it fun, do it your way, and that's it. Let's get started.
Okay, so we have three sets of the embellishments done. So we have three more to go. So that means that now we're gonna start on the dimensional skirts. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about these, I'll tell you. So let me tell you what we need. We need the purple dot organza that's in the embellishment kit and the silver dot um, organza that's in the embellishment kit. And then we need the, um, the strip of ribbon, this cute little tape measure ribbon. Um, it comes in one long piece, uh, folded in half and cut it in half, 12 inches for each one, one for each skirt. So I've been reading through the directions and <laughs> looks a little Japanese to me to tell you the truth, some other language, but I know some Japanese, so that's not gonna help me much. Um, but I'm going to read them again and figure it out. Sewing is not my strong suit and this has um, some very interesting directions. So let, let's go ahead and figure this out and get our organza skirts on our wire dress form. Let's do it. Okay, so we did the dimensional skirts and they came out great <laughs> once I figured it out. They're not hard, so don't worry. I had my brain wrapped around it trying to figure it out and sewing is just not my thing, but once I got it, it actually was really easy. The second one was much easier than the first one. So um, those are done, see here and here. So they, they're done. So that means that we have four sets of embellishments done. So on to number five. Number five is the fabric bolts. And those look really easy. Um, and then we just have the pins and our quilt is done. So for the fabric bolts, we need eight fabrics that are each four by three and a half. And you can see the picture here of them. It's the orange banners, the purple with bats, the orange spider webs, the green cauldron, there's two of those. And then the black with orange dots, another orange spiders, 
and then the purple and purple stripes. So each of these, there's eight fabrics total, four by three and a half. And then in your embellishment kit, there are these little um, fabric bolts, little plastic bolts. And if you notice on the bolts, there are two holes on them so that you can sew, can you see that? So that you can sew the fabric onto the bolt if you choose. I've seen some people just using a hot glue gun. Um, it's kind of funny because I've, I don't think I've hot glued anything on any of my quilts before until those skirts. And then I was very happy <laughs> to use my glue gun on the skirt. So I'm fine with putting hot glue on these as well. They're just little plastic pieces to hold down our fabric. Um, so you have an option of in the directions, it just says to basically fold it around it. You fold it in half and then um, fold it around the bolt. And you can do that or you can do that little sideways um, diagonal corner and I'm gonna do that. I saw that on uh, Camberbell Tuesday Tips with Laurie, but I can't find it for the life of me. I looked everywhere, all through YouTube. My dogs are <laughs> in the room now. Um, anyway, I looked all over for it to try and link it to, for you and I, I looked all over YouTube, all over their Facebook page and I can't find it. So. Um, Anyway, you have the option of doing a straight um, bolt of fabric or you can fold down the corner like, like you often see in fabric shops. And I'm gonna try that one, um, but either one is totally fine and you can hot glue these suckers or you can um, sew through those two little holes that are on there to hold on your fabric. Either way will work fine. So we need eight of them, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the bolts of fabric were really easy. So the last step is the pins. So we have 11 more pins to add on to our quilt. Um, I'm going to hand sew each one on and then we're done. So let's finish up. And our quilt is officially done but <laughs> I'm gonna add a quilt label so um, a quilt label just has generally your name and date on it so that generations down the road can remember who made this quilt and it's special and all that so you can use any design you can use one that is um, from the quilt itself like um, you could use the gravestone. You could use one of the little pumpkins, um, the hoop. I, I saw somebody in the Kimberbella group, or or maybe it was a different group. Um, they used the hoop, like that Boo Haunt hoop, whatever it is, um, and put their name in that. You could do that. There's lots of options. I've decided I am going to use um, a pumpkin design from this old 
Kimberbell, um, oh, the possibilities for Halloween. There's a cute little um, double pumpkin, and I'm going to do that. And actually, um, there is in the vault, there's um, some cute designs. There's some sort of Halloween CD. I don't remember what it was called, but um, there is a Halloween CD and it has a pumpkin and candy corn and different things. Um, I decided not to do the candy corn only because it was too small, but you could um, do that. You could do whatever, but I'm going to do the double pumpkins. Um, you can use a Kimberbell design, other design, whatever for your label. I am going to stitch it on felt and um, that will be easy to sew on hand stitch onto the back of my quilt without going through all the different layers. Um, so anyway, that's the last step in this whole process. This has been quite a journey and I want to just say I'm really, really, really proud of everyone that stuck with it and all the newbies. There were a lot of new people doing this quilt for the first time, and I feel so honored that you guys shared this journey with me. It's been a lot of fun. So I'm tired. I'm going to go get some sleep, but I'm going to finish my label in the morning and then the last tutorial. So here we go. Mm -hmm.